transcribed.
Good morning. Is anybody on the line? Yes, good morning. Good morning. Uh, good, morning. Uh, good, morning. Yeah, good morning. Is, is, is not kind on the line? I don't know. This is Dana. Oh, good morning, Dana. Peggy, Sankar, you're in line. Good morning, Mr. Damon. This is Lorene Spencer. I'm on the line. Oh, okay. Good morning, Lorene. Um, good morning, Ms. Good morning Carol. Okay, is Ms. Ms. Karen Doki on the line? Hello, good morning, speaker. I'm here. Oh, okay, good. Oh, we're recording now. Everything's good to go. So thank you, everyone, for joining us this morning uh, on a uh, on our journey towards uh, creating a, an expenditure plan. Uh, today's uh, Navigate Committee of the 24th Navajo Nation Council. We'll go ahead and get started now. Uh, today we're having a work session via telecommunications. I'm here in Winter Rock, Arizona on the Navajo Nation. Today is Thursday, June 4th, 2020. The time now is 9.13 a.m. We have a proposed agenda before us, presided by myself, Seth Thaman, Speaker of the Navajo Nation Council. Call the meeting to order again at 9.13 a.m. Uh, before we move on, um, <clears throat> Do I have a uh, miss? I heard honorable Helona. Are you on the line still? Yes, sir. I'm still on the line. Honorable Helona, do you mind leading us in with the invocation this morning? Sure. Thank you. I will. Go ahead, Ms. Helona. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for this uh, wonderful day. I'd like to say thank you to the Lord. Thank you, God, for giving us the strength to endure the seasons, the hard seasons. Nothing we go through is wasted. Right now, parts of our world are reopening and preparing for a reopening. We don't know what transition will look like at this time, but you do, Lord. So we ask during this time that you would Guard our hearts, our minds, encourage our, anyone's feelings who are anxious, afraid, and hopeless. Lord, continue to heal those who are sick and protect those who are not. And Lord, please protect and strengthen the brave people serving others in the front lines of this pandemic. Lord, give us, give our leaders the wisdom and courage. move forward in this, in this, in this day, and again, navigate to receive your electoral hope and truth by the actions. Lord, you love your brothers and sisters and your church of generosity throughout the world. And restore the love and faith in those all around us. Restore community for the glory of your name and rescue the people from depression, addiction, and loneliness. And Lord, continue to transform us. Let us spiritually renew the spirit of the Lord your hope. We believe in the truth of the Lord. Come up here as a new trust in you. And become and come and do what you can only do. We ask that you comfort the hearts of all those loved ones who are in pain today as they are experiencing the loss of a loved one in their family. We ask all of these things in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much. 
uh, for that invocation this morning. With that, colleagues, uh, let me go on down to uh, Ms. Karen Doki. You mind doing a roll call this morning? Yes, sir. Good morning, Thank you. everyone. Honorable Seth Dana. Present. Honorable Seth Damon is present. Honorable Elmer P. Begay. Honorable Key Allen Begay Jr. Honorable Paul Begay Jr. Delegate Paul Begay is present. Honorable Paul Begay Jr. is present. Honorable Nathaniel Brown. Delegate Brown is present. Honorable Nathaniel Brown is present. Honorable Eugenia Charles Newton. Honorable Amber Kinez Uh Delegate Amber Kinez Brokardi is present. Thank you. Honorable Amber Kinez Brokardi is present. Honorable Herman M. Daniel. Honorable Mark A. Freeland. Honorable Pernell Holona. Honorable Pernell Holona is present. Honorable Jamie Kenyo. Honorable Vince James. Honorable Ricky Nez. Delegate Rick Nez is here. Thank you. Good morning. Honorable. Good morning. Honorable Ricky Nez is present. Honorable Carl Slater. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. Honorable Wilson Stewart Jr. Honorable Charlene So. Honorable Daniel Eso. Honorable Eugene So. Honorable Otto So. I'm here. Honorable Otto So is present. Honorable Thomas Walker Jr. Honorable Edison J. Winika. Honorable Edmund Yazi. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair. Speaker, you have seven members present. Great, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good day, Bennett. Uh, thank you for calling in, everyone. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on down to announcements. Anybody have announcements this morning? No, sir. Uh, speaker. Uh, yes. Paul Begay. Honorable Begay. Good morning. Uh, good morning, uh, staff, Speaker Damon, colleagues that are on the air. Uh, thank you. Appreciate it. On Monday, we have a planned teleconference on the subject of quadrilateral agreement, uh, agreement that was done years back here in the uh, Western Navajo between the federal government, National Park Service, and the Navajo Nation. That agreement is going to expire this year. There's a lot of information in there I believe the council delegates need to be aware of. And so uh, this is going to be a work session on Monday being planned. Uh, word will be sent out to you time and day uh, on the times. Uh, I just want to call my co to encourage my colleagues to listen in on this uh, uh, discussion on the quadrilateral agreement. There's a lot of agreements that does not favor Navajo at all and it favors uh, completely Navajo uh, National, National Park Service and its oversight in the Kachi, Kaibato, Navajo Mountain, and even as far as Shanto and part of Utah area. So I encourage uh, 
uh, once you get the notification for Monday's uh, work session. Uh, I'd like to encourage my co uh, colleagues to join in and, and learn about the quadrilateral agreement. Yeah. Thank you, Honorable Papa Gay. Any other announcements this morning before we get started? Speaker, this is Delegate South. Uh, Honorable Otto, so go ahead. Good morning, uh, members of the 23rd, 24th Honorable Mission Council. I uh, just uh, let you guys know that uh, I believe at 1 o'clock today we're going to have a uh, Navajo Hopi Land Commission meeting. Uh, the agenda is out and um, information relating to the call in numbers on the agenda. So, Thank you. Hey, great. Any other comments, questions, colleagues? I mean, actually, announcements. Sorry. We're done. We can go ahead and move on. Recognizing guests and visiting officials. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for calling in uh, to today's uh, Navigated Committee work session. We're still continuing on down the line uh, for legislation 0115-20 and resolution, oh, now known as resolution CMY-44-20 um, and in collaboration too as well. Um, with other legislations that this could possibly affect too as well, not only to uh, the ones that are currently in the hopper, but the ones that are continuing to move forward uh, that are, might be drafted up. Uh, I just want to say again, thank you to everyone that's listening in on the executive side, judicial side, uh, and most importantly to all the individuals on the World Wide Web. Thank you for listening in this morning. Uh, on our discussion topics that we'll be having today. As you know, we've been hearing a series of different topics from numerous different presenters on what we should do with the federal CARES dollars that has come to the nation uh, almost a month ago, uh, a little over a month ago, and uh, trying to identify where we need to go ahead and move forward with these funds. Uh, with that saying, uh, the uh, full um, uh, expression of what we need to do is try to identify where we need to go ahead and uh, help assist individuals in the front line, uh, workers, uh, our first responders, and uh, making sure that everyone's protected when they come back to work here in the Navajo Nation and continuing on through this pandemic as we know is COVID-19. Now, the most important thing that we're gonna be listening uh, to today is uh, we have a presentation coming from the Division of the Community Development. Uh, Division of Community Development uh, oversees uh, uh, the, not only community development, but uh, oversees all the projects uh, across the Navajo Nation and helps assist in guiding uh, uh, and maintaining uh, advocacy for the Navajo Nation 110 chapters. Uh, so uh, we look forward to this discussion today. This was one of the last pieces that we're looking at and trying to make sure that we can go ahead and hear everything that we possibly can in order for us to drop a, uh, a very good uh, fund, uh, actually expenditure plan uh, so we can go ahead and get these dollars out as soon as possible. With that saying, uh, the most important thing that I have to say again this morning, thank you everybody for listening in. Thank you to everybody who's out there um, that's looking towards uh, uh, or interested in how the Navajo Nation Council's working towards getting these funds out to the people. Uh, we're here at Ground Zero making sure that we can get something done um, by the end of next week. Uh, with that, I know the Division of Community Development is online right now, um, and we'll go ahead and give the floor over to you. Uh, I think, uh, Dr. Yellowman, are you there? Yes, good morning. Can you hear me, Speaker? Uh, yes, you can. 
Dr. Yellman, I guess my first question is, do you happen to have a presentation? I don't think, uh, I don't think I, I received do it. I do uh -huh. have, um, good morning, speaker. I good morning. do have the, I do have the uh, the invitation that you uh, sent over the weekend, and I do have <clears throat> the listing in front of me. And DCD is still compiling the information. Uh, you asked for uh, a list of all the projects, but I can give the verbal update today and um, submit the full report. Okay, go ahead. Then. Uh, floor is yours, gentlemen. Okay. Yate, Yate Benedo, Shinat Ani, Beish Beisa Anigi, She, Miss Yellow Man, Pearl Yellow Man, and She, Aron Shlinigi, E, Tana Bithlian Shlin, Gizasana Bushish Chin, Koban Hadashi Che, Ado Hanagan, E, Deshinale, She, I see Twinin is Dizade and Nasha. Ado, I just want to say good morning. <coughs> Good morning, and um, thank you for for this time. And I uh, appreciate everybody's um, uh, time and, and and consideration this morning, and everyone's leadership. And to those listening, good morning. I do have staff uh, online as well. If there's additional questions um, that they could assist with, um, so speaker, I'll begin my presentation here, and I'll give a general overview and welcome questions. The, the, the list that was provided to me or the invitation that was provided to me was um, <clears throat> uh, some expenditures that, had, that, that were unforeseen uh, since March 1 of this year um, that had impacted. In other words, um, uh, what were some of the unforeseen impacts of COVID at the chapter level. I'll speak a little bit to that. Uh, some of the unmet needs for our division, uh, including the Navajo Nation, 110 Navajo Nation chapters. Um, best practices and implementation for Navajo Nation employees, uh, including the 110 chapters <clears throat> moving forward in this um, post-COVID uh, world we have. And then lastly, the list of all current infrastructure. And speaker, that's the list I'm referring to that um, CPND is compiling. Um, it, it, it is in the WIND system, and we do have it in our master spreadsheet, but we'll compile it so that um, it's in a readable format uh, for uh, uh, the legislative branch and members of the legislative branch. Um, so, Speaker, <clears throat> I'll just begin with the overview of uh, the current infrastructure list um, pertaining to our current situation here. Prior to prior to citizen funds, um, before 2018, DCD was uh, authorized a little a little. Uh, uh, over $9 million in capital outlay projects, um, estimating around 40 projects prior to Sihistin. Um And then shortly after that, um, we received, the ECD received the Sihistin capital outlay for 149 pro uh, projects, CAP 35-18, in the amount of $100 million. Shortly after that, capital outlay funds from New Mexico with House Bill 280, we were authorized 67 projects in the amount of $24 million. We also received TIF projects, Tribal Infrastructure Funds, also from New Mexico, <clears throat> 2018 to 2019, um, in the amount of $5.8 million. We also work closely with <clears throat> we also work closely with Utah Navajo Trust Fund, um, and those projects represent the Navajo Utah project in the amount of 7.1 million. 
DCD also is authorized um, with the Navajo Nation General Fund um, matching funds and at 5.7 million currently. Um, so those are the projects that we currently have listed. Those are the projects that we will provide. Um, as you know that um, at the start of the pandemic or right on the onset of the pandemic, we were also um, in the process of um, uh, New Mexico House Bill 314 and 208 um, receiving those projects. Close to 60 of those projects were vetoed, and currently those projects are considered frozen, or um, they're being currently uh, they're currently being frozen. Um, we are advocating. BCD is advocating to the governor's office and to IAD that those projects um, currently being reviewed uh, for 2020 are directly related to COVID-19. Those projects consist of power line, water line, and heavy equipment, uh, and vertical build. So we're advocating that those are directly tied to the prevention, um, the safety, and the um, uh, precautionary measures of preventing COVID-19 on the Navajo Nation. Uh, as you know that in the last two months here, we were heavily impacted and many of our chapters needed heavy equipment. And so we're advocating for all of those heavy equipment projects to be uh, considered for the 2020 projects in New Mexico. So speaker, those are the listings. Um, that's just the amount. Um, the total amount there <clears throat> is roughly 160 million dollars there. We do have um, an additional 20 million in other projects um, and that's just one type of project that was the um, uh, BIA 638 projects. Those under former President uh, Russell Begay, they were allocated to the Historic Preservation Project or Department. <clears throat> Those uh, projects um, uh, for an undetermined time uh, were sitting at the Historic Preservation Department under uh, President Nez and Myron Lizer administration. They were reallocated uh, to Division of Community Development and I've tasked the CHID Department on um, accepting those projects. We're still in the negotiation phase of um, receiving those projects. Uh, so thank you. Uh, speaker, those are the listing of our current projects. I'll, I'll move on. Uh, Go ahead. The last, the last two months, <clears throat> um, Division of Community Development and the 110 chapters have um, just witnessed some uh, uh, unforeseen and unimaginable uh, circumstances in our community and the 110 chapters. Um, it, it, even right now discussing the reopening phase, um, I, as I share on many of the agency uh, conference call meetings, respectfully speaking, um, to properly open to properly open and reopen the 110 chapters, I would take this opportunity to thoroughly assess um, the facilitation, the bathrooms, uh, the uh, the sinks, the 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 the, the toilet, many of those, the kitchen, um, the dispensers, many of those uh, uh, facilities need to be assessed. Not to mention, um, there are some chapters that are non-existent, and there's some chapters that I can think of off the top of my head that are not even open. Um, so some of the chapters and the chapter staff are uh, working remotely from different areas, um, so that that affects their local governance as well, or their ability to lo locally govern. Uh, 
Um, <clears throat> also, in addition to enforcing enforcing some of the guidelines and the CDC recommendations moving forward, um, I am putting in our reopening recommendations for additional safety officers or components to that uh, liking. Um, during the last two months, HCOC has had a safety branch and we had safety officers. Many times those safety officers were roving. They went to different areas or they went to different communities. If there were any groups larger than 10 or et cetera, um, the safety officer was there to assess um, the situation. And given some of the um, current legislations and the public order that chapters and chapter meetings, chapter officials and chapter meetings must remain under a certain number <clears throat> for safety reasons, um, I am advocating that we consider some type of um, safety component in the reopening for the chapters. Along with reopening, along with reopening the chapters, I think we have to um, short term. Short term would be remarking some of the chapters, very similar to what we see at bashes. There's markers. There's visible markers. I have staff here inquiring and looking at um, uh, handheld thermometers. That might be something that we equip the chapters with. Um, we have been, we have been sending chapters, gloves, and masks. Um, we are getting ready to do another shipment of, glo of gloves, masks, and Clorox. Um, and then we will prepare another shipment. Um, I do feel that DCD has a role in providing PPEs for um, chapter staff, um, chapter official, um, and, and elders that may come in. Um, I, I do see elders uh, in the community or, or at bashes, and I, I worry they're wearing um, uh, their masks too long, and you can tell their masks are long. So I think there needs to be some type of a surplus of masks at the chapter level for community members. Every chapter layout is different, um, but I spoke yesterday on two, two agency calls, <clears throat> um, and this is where I'll need the support of council and working with CDC guidelines and HCLC. I can make recommendations to use precautionary methods such as plexiglass or shower curtains. I've seen shower curtains at um, uh, the local post office. But if there is exposure at the local chapter level, there has to be some type of um, discussion of liability, so to speak, or responsibility. And uh, there just has to be a little bit more discussion as to who is responsible for putting up um, the, the plexiglass, so to speak. In other words, you can get a PEP worker to put up the, pe the plexiglass, but if it works or doesn't work, um, we just need better standards. And we, we have to establish perhaps some type of code or codes, like you have housing codes, you have different types of codes of safety. Um, that, that's what I'm trying to get at. There has to be some type of code or, or um, uh, precautionary measures that are adhered to at the chapter level. And of course, there's gonna come a cost to that. So I do have staff assisting me in drafting up some of those costs their basic assessments right now um, because every chapter is different, um, but that's a major um, undertaking um, for the chapters to, to uh, move in that direction. The other thing that is associated to that um, speaker and members of the 24th 
uh, Navajo Nation Council is the mitigation and the behavior. And the chapters have um, uh, historically been a place of social gatherings, uh, receptions, and celebrations, and bingo, and meetings. Um, that that might have to change. Um, there's going to have to be education in that, and there's going to have to be awareness and preventive measures all over again. And um, so I think it's an opportunity to advocate for additional training or um, some component of training at the chapter level um, for chapter officials and or chapter staff in reopening. There has to be some trainings provided to them, whether that's through CDC or online or through HCOC. I'm certainly not trying to volunteer HCOC for additional tasks, but um, it does have to come from those um, level experts. Um, so that's, that's at just the reopening. Um, and then again, the supplies, the sanitation supplies and the um, PPEs at the chapter level. We have been trying to incorporate some calculations into the reopening. So this is just an example. If you have four staff at the chapter level and the first phase of reopening is 20 hours, um, what's the burn rate of gloves and masks at 20 hours providing essential government functions? Um, and then can, can that calculations, um, uh, will they increase at a phase two 40 hours? So there are some calculations that mm -hmm. we're trying to take into consideration to um, maintain a level of supplies at the chapter level. Um, I'll, I'll move on, speaker. So that's just um, some thorough thoughts. The other thing that is really important and that has um, heavily impacted all Navajo Nation buildings um, is the sanitation and the decon, the uh, decontamination of the buildings. Uh, roughly one of the businesses that we have uh, recently utilized um, is roughly around $5,000 to decon a certain footage of um, buildings. And if we were to just procure or to allot um, a chapter, uh, one chapter at 110 chapters, one deconning, um, we're, we're looking at um, 500,000 just for the deconning of facilitation. Now, although you can select different types of um, businesses, but it's the um, business that assures that the actual, they have to be either certified or um, have expertise in this type of uh, uh, deconning. And then um, there's an assessment afterwards of did they expire the virus um, if there was any type of exposure or contamination. So that's, that's a major undertaking as well. Um, but I, I I do have requests from chapters right now in deconning um, chapters um, due to exposure. There's some chapters right now that have not been entered. Um, and uh, uh, so working with HCOC in addressing that. I, DCD, we did requests for funds um, that were donated. Um, to be utilized for deconning, and um, we're still advocating for those funds to be um, uh, uh, used for for the chapters. So the the deconning and the sanitation is going to be really important moving forward. Either we just start procuring, and we have um, on on standby these, um, like for example, Envirotech or different types of um, uh, disinfecting services, we need to have them on, on standby. 
um, and establish relationships, or we need to work with our uh, general service. <laughs> I, again, I'm not trying to volunteer any of, any of the other departments, but there needs to be some training internally within the Navajo Nation so that we are uh, better equipped um, in the future. Uh, I'll continue to move on here, um, Speaker. Um, we are addressing the best practices and for Navajo Nation employees. Um, and with all due respect right now, each division, um, they are um, working on their reopening. Uh, I'm working with staff um, and ASC on addressing the reopening for the, the chapters. I spoke a little bit about that. Um, but <clears throat> since the onset of COVID-19, CCD um, has been fully entrenched in responding to COVID-19. Although we do have staff at home, um, respectfully speaking, I, I have not considered DCD opening just yet, uh, just because we're still dealing with COVID-19 every day. So um, at some point, I'm going to have to um, switch gears and address DCD opening, but we do have staff working from home, and we have um, shared on several agency calls that our <clears throat> staff um, are committed to doing some project updating um, via conference call, and we are scheduling one with Eastern Agency soon, and then we'll go by agency. Um, so we do have staff working from home. I'll switch gears here and I'll wrap up. I'll wrap up speaker with just the last of um, the most important projects here that are related to uh, COVID-19, and those are our power line and our water line projects and our bathroom additions. Um, so we, we just believe that uh, those are going to be um, pertinent to the situation. Our current water, uh, water project listing is roughly around 20 million in projects. Those are both uh, Citizen, New Mexico, and Navajo Nation matching. Uh, with Citizen, we have 25 water projects. And we have, under New Mexico funded projects, we have 48, uh, totaling around 21 million. And those are water projects, water line projects. And then we have our power line projects um, pertinent to this the context of this report, we have 57 power line projects under Citizen, and under New Mexico funded projects, we have 28 funded power line projects, a total of 93 at just under 30 million. We also have bathroom additions um, that I can send uh, forward. In our bathroom additions, we have been in conversation uh, with NTUA the last few weeks with the Navajo Nation uh, COVID-19 water group. Um, there are some projected numbers of houses that need um, the bathroom additions, um, but uh, those projections have varied between um, Mr. Jason John's shop and NTUA. Um, so I've heard numbers such as like 5,000 families need bathroom additions or et cetera. Um, but uh, nonetheless, our calculations come up to be very similar to Jason, Jason John's calculations of around 23 to 25,000 per house for the construction of the bathroom addition. Uh, and speaker, lastly, I just want to add that we also have the ICIP, um, those are the unfunded projects. And those projects um, do represent the chapters. Um, we, we do consider and review those projects, um, but those are projects that still exist 
they're unfunded projects. There are projects um, that were proposed by chapters and um, are have not been um, uh, funded. Um, so, Speaker, I'll I'll add one more thing to. <laughs> sorry, um, <clears throat> prior to um, uh, my start here last year, the division director, previous division director, had um, abolished. Um, uh, limitation, solid waste management. Um, I, uh, for, for reasons, I, I, I'm not sure. Um, it was abolished around 2016, 2017. There was a component inside of DCD that was on education and, um, uh, re recycling. Many of these Many of these uh, entities have only surfaced in the last two months, and one of them was the solid waste management plan. Although um, it has not fully been uh, identified who who, sh who needs to take the lead on this, um, but I feel like. Uh, since it involves the chapters, it involves the Navajo Nation, um, DCD has in, in somewhat um, taken lead on reviewing the discussion of solid waste. But solid waste was a major component of um, the COVID-19. And not to mention uh, at the onset of one of the very first communities that was impacted, um, Chochimbito. We had to act fast and deliver um, trash bins to that community. There had to be a level of training there. Um, as, as, you, as we all know that the virus, coronavirus, can live on certain surfaces um, and uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a community such as Chochimbato where, where there is an outbreak, the the handling of solid waste was um, important and it was new at the time. Uh, so there's some major uh, safety precautions needed in moving forward with a Navajo Nation solid waste management plan. Um, I am in the process of uh, addressing the capacity of DCD um, uh, we are in the process or in the process of needing to hire additional staff um, uh, that could assist um, myself in the solid waste management plan. Um, so we're still building our capacity to adjust the needs of the Navajo people. So I just speak, I just want to make sure that I mentioned the need for solid waste management plan and the support for one. Um, the, the need is definitely there. But given the COVID-19, um, it, it does need consideration and, and funding. So, Speaker, that, that does conclude um, what I have here. Um, and I do have staff listening in. And if there's anything that I may have um, <clears throat> uh, need to address, I also can speak a little bit more about the COVID-19 watering group as well. So, Speaker... That concludes my report right now, and I'll turn the time back over. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Yeoman, for that presentation uh, this morning. With that, uh, Dr. Yeoman, um, if you... Uh, as soon as, you, you, as soon as you uh, can get that um, information over to us, that would be great. Uh, from there, we can go ahead and move forward. Um, with that, colleagues, uh, is there any comments, questions at this time? This is Delegate uh, Yellowhair, speaker. Good morning. Good morning. Go ahead, Mr. Oyate has speaker Dosh Nasani. 
Good for counsel, uh, my colleagues. And uh, thank you for your report, uh, Dr. Yellerman. Uh, I want to say thanks to you that you gave me some of the uh, PPE supplies. Uh, we gave, I gave it to the, the, my five chapters. But one item I'd like to bring this to your attention is we talk about uh, this regime, the official contract is a priority. We talk about it, and uh, it's about completed, but there's two documents that give it back to you. One budget is when a budget form is be signed by Andy Thomas. Also, Shanana Sosta, two months of saying, Nana Sae, yes, about a the building itself, a, uh, another doc. Uh, I still need that one PowerPoint document. ADA uh, asked you to uh, provide that copy too, but as of today, I haven't get it yet. That is only delay, so I can uh, attach with the, my uh, legislation still under with the uh, legal counsel's office. This where I need your your support, 100% this year. Let's build something for the Navajo in, in Pinion, Arizona. We really need it. Uh, the crime is uh, raised high in Pinion. I see you in Chicago. You was out of politics and done law. I never know what they are. They live without a no. I see they are easy. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. With that, Honorable Yellow Air. With that, um, let me move on to the one more, and then I'll come back to you, Dr. Yellowman. Uh, uh, Honorable Holona, can you hear me? I'm alone. Can you hear me? I'm on the line, speaker. Can you hear me? I can barely hear you, Honorable Mona. Okay, I, uh, yeah, I just had, I was trying to get on for the announcement this morning, but you already cleared it all out. Can, can, can anybody, can, am I the only one that can barely hear him? No, we can't hear him. I mean, if you really listen close to your, close to the speaker, you can hear it. He's trying to make, he basically said that he missed the time for announcements and he wanted to make an announcement. I had to turn up my uh, uh, megaphone to hear it. <laughs> Hello, speaker, is this better? Yep, there, we can hear you now. Hear you now. Yeah, I had a different phone. I had to get my other phone. No, I was just trying to get an announcement this morning to, to let you know we're having that state task force meeting Saturday and also uh, I think the gaming meeting is scheduled for Saturday afternoon. But since I'm on the line now, I just wanted to... Uh, Dr. Yellerman, I had a couple of things I wanted to talk to you about. I guess we talked about it earlier. I never got a response. Um, as far as the, the funding that was handed out to the chapters, and I don't know, Speaker, maybe you can help me with this, that what I need to do, what we need to do, because the funding that was delivered to the chapters, uh, I had one chapter that was under sanction, and they took the money back from that uh, for their sanction amount at, on the emergency funding. <clears throat> the, Last year, when we had the emergency funding, they were given the whole amount. But this year, they were they, they were deducted their 10%. Now, my question was to Dr. Yellman at that time, that was that uh, funding was given to the community and, and the sanction was on the chapter house. Uh, why do we have to be penalizing the community for it? And like I said, last year, they were given the full amount. So do I need to get some legislation started to uh, get that cleared up so that any time when we have an emergency funding going to the chapters that they receive the full amount? Because, um, I, 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 you know, it's not fair to the community that they only get a partial amount of the emergency funds. 
like I said, we're, we're penalizing the chapter house for the misuse of the funds, not the community. Um, so, and then the other thing is, uh, I guess, I don't know if uh, Del Ganez is on, but we were supposed to be going through that, uh, uh, reviewing the, the sanctioned chapters again. Uh, last January, we had a meeting uh, uh, to get uh, review the, the chapters that are under sanction. Uh, it's past the six months, and they were on a six-month notice. So um, my question with that is, uh, are we still going to be try to go through with that and reset that up to get another hearing to see if we can get our chapter out of sanction? Uh, those are my two questions, Speaker. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Yeoman, uh, let me go to one more and then I can come back to you. Honorable Pope again. Honorable Paul Begay, are you on line? Yes, Speaker. Delegate Daniel So also wants to ask questions. Okay, hey, I'll put you in the queue, Chairman So. Honorable Paul Begay, go ahead. Speaker, can you add feeling to the queue? Good morning, Sadar. With that, let me go back to you. Um, let me go back to uh, Dr. Yellow and go ahead and answer, uh, uh, I guess, uh, Honorable Yellow here and Honorable Holona's uh, questions at this time. Then I'll come back to the floor with uh, Honorable Paul Begay to start us off. Dr. Yellow Okay, thank you. I don't, I can't, uh, Delegate Yellow here, thank you. I did. Um, follow up on your question and also sent another follow-up email to Mr. Thomas, Andy Thomas, for the two items that you requested. Um, so you'll see an email from myself right now to Mr. Thomas um, requesting for the information. I have discussed that with him before, um, so we'll make sure that we get you the information. Delegate Halona. I followed up on the question again that I sent over to uh, OOC and I just now sent another email regarding the sanctioned chapter and the question and the conversation that we had previously with OOC. Um, so I just sent another email regarding your concern. Also followed up with the conversation on the personnel as well. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yellman. With that, uh, let me go ahead and move down. Uh, Honorable Paul Begay, are you on the line? Yes, uh, can you hear me, Speaker? I can hear you, Honorable Begay. Okay, thank you. Appreciate uh, uh, allowing me to speak. Uh, uh, good morning, colleagues. Uh, thank you for your presentation, Shadeja, Dr. Paul Yellman. Uh, just one concern that I have. I know that with this uh, pandemic uh, going on, uh, we need to have every uh, uh, cooperation that we can have, that we can garner at the chapter level to work together to make sure that we serve our community the best way that we can. In one of the five chapters that I oversee, has an issue with uh, C, uh, CSC, who is not allowing the chapter officials to work with, with at least if, in, uh, to my understanding, uh, the chapter official president has contact uh, the city ASC, he has contact Window Rock ASC, 
And I uh, believe he says that he has also contacted uh, you, uh, Dr. Yellowman, on this issue. Of course, we know that the chapters are closed and, we, and they work behind uh, locked doors. But there are times when a community member uh, needs to ask questions. And they don't have to, they don't need to go inside the building, but the questions need to be answered. But what really bothers me is that the chapter officials is not even allowed to communicate with the CSC. And the chapter officials uh, are kind of powerless is the word that they use, we are powerless uh, uh, with uh, we're trying to help people. We can't help people. They need our help, but EFC is not allowing us to do that. They are now uh, planning to go straight to President Nance to, to, uh, to address their concern. Their hands, they feel their hands are tied, uh, and, and, and therefore they cannot help their community, which are constantly visiting the chapter to, to ask questions or ask for help. Uh, in the meantime, the CSC is in the office locked up and not allowing uh, any kind of uh, support or help to happen. This morning, Dr. Yellowman, Thank you, Speaker. Oh, 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 and oh, Thank you, uh, Honorable Paul McGee, for that. With that, moving on down, Honorable Nate Brown. I uh, yeah, that speaker. Um, <clears throat> and my colleagues out there, Fish Monson, Um, thank you, um, Dr. Yellowman, for your presentation. Um, I appreciate the work that you and your staff are doing. I understand that you guys are working around the clock and taking time from your family. So, for the record. I think that's usually been my expression to our division directors. Despite that, I, I, I do see social media saying otherwise. But nevertheless, I just want to know, I just want to tell you that I do appreciate the work that you and everyone that are doing. Um, <clears throat> I know that this pandemic is due to all of us. I think um, uh, we have not lived through, for myself, um, a, a huge pandemic like this that really impacts our people. Um, first of all, I wanted to thank you for <clears throat> your work and your staff for bringing the trash bin to the Tilton Bito chapter. We requested that to be removed. However, to this day, there's still a lot of um, trash, residual trash, I guess, people. And that's something unforeseen, right? Um, we did not expect that. Um, uh, sometimes our people, um, they're desperate and they don't want to travel to KN to, to dispose of their trash at the transfer station. So therefore, they um, are, they just over, it was overflowing. And to this day, the last time I went to drop off some sanitation stuff, there was still a lot of trash there. My request to you, I know there was a 213 form that was um, uh filled out by Chochimito chapter. So if we can have someone pick that up. Again, we only have two ladies that are at the chapter and they are doing the, the best that they can with the donation. I know that you said, uh, and also with Chochimito, since that seems to be um, the topic a lot on social media. If I can, again, I've been requesting this. Um, I wanted to see if you can send more support staff to help them. Um, it doesn't have to be 20 hours. It could be like 15 hours a week um, on food deliveries to help us with that. 
um, someone who is trained who can help us. Um, I did help them um, one afternoon and um, lifting the heavy boxes. So these young ladies are, they're, they're phenomenal. If anything, I think um, also in the process that we need to also thank them. Um, I can't say enough about the Chichimito ladies who are holding down the whole community who has been hard hit. Um, and the other thing with the Chichimito community is I've been making a request uh, through Navajo County and I've been meaning to reach out to NDOT. Um, we, I hate to say this, and, and it doesn't feel good saying this, but on average we have about a, uh, we have to bury about three um, community members a week, and their backhoe has been broken. So we've been working with Navajo County to get that repaired. However, sometimes then a hotel has to call their backhoe there. But right now we don't have a flatbed in Kansas chapter with their strict rules, um, they're not delivering their backhoe as well. So right now, all the backhoes are grounded to the communities only, which means our community members in Chilchen Beto are hand digging the grave sites. Um, I mean, right now it's getting um, hotter up there. So um, I have people calling me constantly. Um, if we can, um, <clears throat> um, I, we've been working on that. So um, I'll see, I know that you've checked in. Um, I know that the, the other matter also is they, I know I got your email with the Dana Hotel Chilchumbito water. Um, both communities uh, decided to not charge our people for potable water from the chapter um, for people who live in remote areas. And our water stations are only twice a week. So our people are okay with that. And they plan their gas money and their travel to Dana Hotel chapter to get potable water. Um, to, to our community members. So I did talk to NTUA and they've, they've told me that since the pandemic and a lot of people are unable to pay for the utility, and this is across the Navajo Nation, um, I believe there were like 90,000 um, backlog on people paying. And I guess, so I've been trying to work with them on how we can I don't know, waive it, but then just the CARES Act funding that's coming here. I think that's something that um, my colleagues, um, if we can work on that also. Um, and um, I'm hearing some background noise. Sorry. Oh, thanks, Katie. Please mute your phones. Um, yeah. And um, the other thing is, um, we have a lot of wonderful um, people, again, who are not waiting for the Navajo Nation for food delivery. We have some young people who are delivering from Phoenix, and they want to package and deliver food themselves. My question on that is um, they've requested to use the chapter house, the meeting room, um, but I know our chapter staff, and I'm torn between this because I do um, support the chapter manager saying we did the de decontaminate um, disinfect the chapter and the people that go in there we we, we know their status of the COVID um, testing they are negative and they keep themselves safe um, and they don't want outside people to come in who we don't know their status or um, and even the, the products that they're that they're bringing in I just wanted to know what your um, input or your recommendation there would be so I can go ahead and I really want, I am encouraging our Navajo people to take upon um, these humanitarian efforts since the central um, um, incident command is not delivering um, <clears throat> essential items. Um, to our chapters and to our people. Usually if they do, we get like about eight boxes between the three chapters. That's the incident command post. Um, I do meet with them um, periodically um, on that as well. So, um, so that's where we're at. If you can respond um, to if, if you, what the process would be, um, and this is non-chapter employees who want to, who are bringing essentials and of course they sanitize it they're they're following the strict CDC guidelines um, so they have been trained and some of them are in the clinical work as well some of them are nurses 
and who are from the Mexico community, but who are bringing stuff back with other doctors. So they are aware of it, and they wanted to use the chapter house. Um, so where I'm torn is the chapter says, well, we can't because we know that it's sanitized and we know who goes in there. There's very few people um, that we know that go in there. So that's um, where we're at. And then um, I think that concludes my, uh, and well, actually my final thought would be what your take is on the junk food tax. Um, I know that I think if you can also think about help us in this area and your team who are the oversight over the chapters is um, I think we need to move away or wean our people off slowly, um, some of them, um, off of boxes of food um, because I think that only, I, we know that that only lasts about um, two weeks or less, maybe sometimes even just three days. But I think we need to move towards um, giving out seeds to people who can farm, dry farm, um, who have water. Not everybody does. Uh, we, we know that. And, um, and I like what Utah is doing in giving out sheep. And I think we need to continue to teach our, kid, our, our people, our Navajo people, not just temporary uh, fixes, band-aids. We would need to look at the longevity of our people and their survival with planting um, sheep, um, fruit trees, uh, and, and then, like, giving livestock. And, and I know that's kind of, like, in the area of agriculture also. So, um, <clears throat> and I think if we can move in that direction to show our people as leadership, as a team, and as oversight for the chapters, um, that would be great. I like what um, the state of Utah, San Juan County, are doing, they have been very creative, and I've been actually relying them on a lot um, for, for some of their, their expertise. So thank you. That concludes my comments and questions. Thank you. Have a good day. Uh, uh, Dr. Yellowman, let me go back to you uh, for Honorable Paul Begay and uh, Honorable Brown's uh, questions and comments. Thank you, Speaker. Ado yat e shina Paul Bigay, Delegate Paul Bigay. Um, I I agree the um, the situations that have surfaced, um, not just during COVID but pre-COVID as well. The conflict, um, the 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 conflict and the the. Uh, trauma, some of it's trauma, the, just the overall conflict that we see at the chapter level um, is, is, uh, is saddening and also um, really prohibits or really community involvement and also um, puts challenges to um, community governance and um, and it shuts doors rather than opens doors and and if that's the case then even opportunities um, it has been an ongoing discussion um, as to how to address it there's various um, scenarios throughout the 110 chapters I've shared I've shared Previously, in other reports, that very similar to the um, capital outlay recon meeting, we have chapter recon meetings with the ASC staff, where I ask all the SPPS staff to do a chapter report on on all of the uh, on uh, certain areas of the chapters. And uh, one of our last counts, about eighty out of 110 chapters have some type of conflict occurring. And unfortunately, during the COVID-19, there was a situation where um, our department manager, ASC, Ms. Jim Martin, had to um, go to a funeral, 
COVID related uh, or a funeral, a burial, um, and and be present so that there would be no conflict between a CSC, uh, a chapter staff, and the family mourning. And forgive me, but I, I just think that an ultimate low in community service and and community uh, and and the and the that's a that's a low in chapter the purpose of the chapter and um, so we see these different scenarios um, we have been drafting up um, uh, uh, our plan of operation to address that that's something I um, want to continue uh, working with RDC on. I need the assistance and the support of RDC and the 24th Navajo Nation Council in amending amending um, uh, what was the chapter manager program that was created in 1984 and then the community service coordinator program, which was later created in 1991. Those are um, amendments that we need to make under our um, plan of operation uh, and to address. We're preparing for that and I hope to set a time here shortly with RDC to address that. Um, but it's visible and it's, um, it's, uh, it's costly. It, 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 it uh, prohibits families from being involved and it's not transparent with some of our um, ch our chapter staff. So, with the, with your with your support, I think we can create a chapter environment that is more um, uh, safe, that is a less conflict, and there has to be a way. There there just has to be our chapters can provide um, service without conflict. Um, and and uh, they're, they're just I believe there's there's a way, and we can achieve that um, by by um, some amendments and really addressing the the laws and the policies. And, um, returning back to the chapters that I grew up with, you all have grown up with. There was a sense of um, community. There was a sense of a social, and there was a sense of giving. That, that kind of has changed over the last few decades. So we have to return to that. So anyway, Delegate Begay, um, <clears throat> I do plan to work with RDC on addressing um, some of those amendments to the CSC coordinator program. Um, so I'll, I'll follow up with that. Um, and if I can move on to Delegate Nate Brown. Um, I uh, appreciate your support and appreciate um, uh, your your words. And I know there was a lot of attention to your, your chapters. And um, you know, we we experienced um, the the loss of a of an employee there, and that was really hard um, on uh, in your area and for for many of us too in our for our division. Um, and so I, I extend my appreciation and gratitude as well to your leadership. Um, I just want to touch on the conversation that we had with NTUA. There was some concern over the handling of cash at the chapter level. We did reach some agreements with NTUA to kind of waive some of those um, watering charges and work with FEMA to see if we can re recoup or recover the water costs during this time. That was something FEMA had um, uh, deemed as possible as an eligible uh, cost to recoup or recover. So we've been in conversations with NTUA on, on making that happen. We did have a CSC. We did have a chapter employee in Delegate Brown's area that um, was handling cash and did, did not want to handle cash and was totally understood given the pandemic and given the direct contact with community members 
and and this particular area being um, um, uh, hit with positive cases. So that's the conversation that we're referring to as the, the no charge. Um, Delegate Brown, I, I'm glad you mentioned something that um, I, I wanted to um, include early on in my report, but we do have CERT teams and we do have um, emergency, uh, the emergency management plan and the uh, emergency teams. Um, I, I think this is a time that we're going to have to move forward in um, converting those CERT teams and emergency management teams to COVID-19 related teams um, to assist in the long term of food delivery or even second wave or third wave or, or just the long term of the labor intents of, uh, of providing relief to COVID-19. Um, and that includes even sanitation and different areas. So um, that that might be something we have to consider as um, funding some type of training and addressing a COVID-19 relief team for certain regional areas. That way staff have assistance. And that was a conversation also that was mentioned um, uh, about two meetings ago, conference calls ago with Western Agency, Supervisor Fowler said there was a distribution, food distributor who wanted to deliver food for the next nine months or so. And we started discussing um, CERT teams that can possibly be per converted to COVID-19 teams with the support of the Navajo Nation um, uh, with training and possible some, some funding to assist. There are currently some staging areas that do not want to stand down. Although there's no talk of any staging areas standing down, but they want to keep moving, but they, they also have regular jobs. So we have to find some way of assisting and keeping some of those teams intact. Um, so if we can discuss that further, I'd, um, that would be good, especially at the chapter or regional level. Um, again, back to the safety officer coming in and um, earlier in my report, Delegate Brown, I mentioned the need for safety officers to do roving, roving or to assist in any of the chapters that decon and sanitize. We need a safety officer to do inspections. So um, back to um, supporting the need for additional safety officers. Um, and then lastly, I have watched uh, and we do work with Ms. Boyton from Utah um, and observed the receiving of the, the, the sheep and the, over the last two weekends and um, the junk food tax uh, are more than open to looking at what we can do to expand or to address or make amendments to the junk food tax that better supports um, sustainable living to the Navajo people, um, chapter level. I, I briefly, if I can share, I have some research um, uh, during my graduate work where I was studying families living on uh, empty calories. And families living in poverty more, more, are more likely to live on empty calories who are on a fixed income at the end of the month. And unfortunately, that just gave me a high definition, a high outlook, a critical eye when I see our own community members here coming to Bashes, even now. Um, one is it's a risk, right? We're, we risk going to, to the store right now. So while we're at risk, we go to the store, We you think we would buy food that would sustain us, or you think we would buy foods that would um, be used in multiple ways or multiple dishes to feed more families. I still see families right now who are purchasing and buying food <clears throat> that lead to empty calories. Those are the junk food. And um, it's heartbreaking to watch, but that is purely educational that's prevention, 
that we can use and address uh, a little bit more in the junk food tax. Uh, and then, and I support the idea of returning back to the food sovereignty and sustainable living, um, planting, uh, et cetera, seeds, um, and even reintroducing the irrigation, uh, uh, dry, dry planting uh, and harvesting. So those are some areas that are going to save us um, in the long run uh, and re-educate our young people back to a way of life that has supported our Diné people for thousands of years. Um, and now we have down the street a church's chicken and a KFC and a Taco Bell, which really leads to um, an unhealthy diet. So I'll, I'll end there, um, and I hope I answered and covered the questions if you have. Mr. Speaker. Thank you uh, for that. Uh, those comments and questions, Dr. Yellowman. Is someone said, Mr. Speaker, who is? Mr. So. Oh, good afternoon. Oh, good morning, Mr. So. Did you want me to add you to the list? I can add you to the list. This is the, colleagues, this is the lineup I have right now. I have uh, Honorable Otto So next, uh, Chairman Daniel So, Honorable Mark Freeland, Madam Chair Amber Crotty, and then Honorable Eugene So. With that, Honorable Otto So. Thank you very much, Speaker. I don't, uh, um, thank you, uh, Earl, for your report. report. Um, I just would like to, uh, again, this, 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 I guess, um, commend your, commend your, um, your, uh, the, the communication improvements with the chapters out there. And, um, I know that you have a, um, you don't have a, uh, workforce that, that will actually, uh, reach out to 110 chapters all at once. Um, one area um, to your report that you were speaking to was relating to the bathroom addition projects throughout Navajo and um, whether uh, these, 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 these projects will be utilized, uh, project funds will be utilized for PEP monies or or, or, or anything like that, um, but just as a suggestion, um, I guess if we need to start building bathroom additions, uh, we, our our enterprise up in uh, Shiprock has uh, a a, a uh, craft of uh, carpenters that could actually. Um, Try to try to try to uh, streamline and um, and uh, put these uh, build these bathroom additions a, a lot a lot sooner. Uh, that's just a suggestion. Um, with the COVID dollars that 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 would be earmarked for bathroom addition projects, um, that's what I would just uh, provide recommendation to try to um, see if our um, Enterprise could, could be given a chance, and um, how could we issue a contract to our enterprise to, so that they could build those bathroom additions? Uh, they do have multiple utility crews, and I believe that's uh, one area that that, that that could speed up a lot of the uh, the um, the uh, trades uh, to be hired. I know that uh, the, I, I know that chapters will have their workers or their PP worker there, but the idea is to streamline and put on to, on a fast track to try to build these uh, bathroom additions. And just want to see if, if, if you, you guys have that on your, on your radar or contracting it out to a private contractor to actually um, build these facilities, those restroom facilities and uh, plumbers so forth. 
So they they had all 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 excavation of, of, of these burial so forth um, I believe uh, a lot of these chapters have have back holes in, uh, on, on hand and uh, also there is a uh, private private uh, individuals that have back holes also so with that if, if, if that could be um, as a recommendation to the chapters to to reach out into the private sector and maybe the the, the, the private sector will be able to 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 uh, to be um, uh, to give them some work you know these are these are dollars that are at the chapters and um, just just because the chapter has a backhoe uh, doesn't mean that the chapter or has has to do the, the digging but if you infuse these dollars into the into the private sector to Navajo that actually have bad codes and, 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 you know, you can provide uh, jobs for them and uh, it could increase the economy for the Navajo Nation. Onsen! Oh, do, 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 without. This as a thought. Um, and then the other is to um, get these chapters to start sharing their uh, back codes. That's, that's another area that I think, I think, that could that that could really help at this time. Yes, some chapters backhoes go down, and uh, it is it is something that 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 it has to be addressed at this time. And then your see the uh, CSC um, time and time. Um, there's always been been issues with um, uh, uh, the, the 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 community service coordinator or the chapter manager, whatever. I don't oh 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 chapters I didn't 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 but what I'm getting to is that um, as you rewrite your policies and uh, and so forth, is it time to make our chapter coordinators and our chapter managers at as at at will position? Akoko eya you have more um, you have more leverage. And um, and and and, and uh, if things don't go well, you just can release these individuals without cause. Alcohol, it 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 cheat. Time and time, they're supposed to be there to work with each other and uh, help the uh, chapter official guide guide themselves through a lot of these um 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 um, um a lot of these um um. um Issues that are that are going on at the chapter. So, hey, I don't know about this case, and um, we did do that to 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 uh, to the managers and the um, manager positions. We, we put them up at, at will, and maybe let's 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 include the CSC and uh, executive managers. We make them all at will. Okay, hey, yeah, you won't have this issue uh, where where. Where someone says they are in control, but literally the the chapter officials and the Navajo people should be in control. So, Edea, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Otto. So, with that, we move on now. Chairman Daniel, so, four is yours. <clears throat> Speaker, Chair of the NABI, uh, NABI Gayatit Committee, Ado colleagues, Ado um, Navajo Nation public that's on the live stream, uh, Dr. Yellowman, uh, good morning and appreciate the quick rundown on all the projects, but uh, my main concern is. <clears throat> You gave us budget amounts um, and the and I'm sure the the project listing, but I'd like to see a spreadsheet to where 
what the status of each project is. Are any of them in the 164 review process to actually get a contract awarded? Um, or uh, exactly, and then a listing of who the project managers are for those particular ones, especially the ones that uh, uh, the New Mexico portion, since I'm a delegate from New Mexico and we've lobbied heavily to get some of these uh, projects funded, I'd like to see the status of them. Um, most importantly, the water lines and the power lines and part of the informal process is you know asking the governor to um not take those water lines and power lines off of the um defunding list and so those are some things and if i if you could share with the navajo nation one spreadsheet let's say for citizen funds that are power line or water line. Then another spreadsheet for the um, the ones that were part of the permanent trust fund that five year management plan as well then uh, the um, I guess the three successive uh, um, New Mexico Appropriations again related to power line and water line and the progress and the project manager, so that uh, we can really start pushing a little bit more. Um, those are some um, requests and. Thank you for focusing on the issue of a chapter manager almost delaying a funeral. Mind you, within the chapter grounds, there was a brand new backhoe sitting there. But this particular group, this family, had to go to a neighboring chapter along with the president pro tem to get the chapter and an operator to come dig the um, graves. The other is we're certainly thankful that Ms. Son Lesta, uh, Jim Martin, paid the cemetery fee because this particular chapter manager designee wasn't willing to accept it from community members. That's how um, how, how I guess <clears throat> I don't know how how. Um, a person can be that heartless. I, for myself, was a chapter manager and community service was of utmost importance at that level because people, the community people, they come to the chapter with a need and you're there to try to help them secure a service and to fill that need. And it's not want, it's a need. So thank you for, for uh, Mr. Martin and for yourself for being able to intervene in that manner. And it's, uh, it's tough when <laughs> even the delegate is told by DOG not to talk to a particular chapter manager. So that makes it tough. And I would really like to see the amendment to Title 26 
and the related employment personnel policies that it would affect a change. Mr. Speaker, that would be the extent of my request and the, the extent of my statement. Again, Dr. Yellowman and Ms. Sunglasses, Jim Martin, thank you for the work that you're doing. Well, Taylor, Silly. Thank you. With that, uh, colleagues, uh, let me go back to Dr. Yellowman. Dr. Yellowman, I think there were some questions and comments from Honorable Otto and Chairman So. So refer the floor to you. Thank you, Speaker. Aroyate, Delegate So, Otto So. We are uh, in communication with NECA. I believe you're referring to NECA. And we've been um, establishing and identifying projects that NECA uh, will partner and assist CPMD with. They are uh, fully equipped and moving forward uh, in the future with vertical build as well. So we're happy to be partnering with NECA. Um, uh, it is somewhat of a, of a new relationship and I'm glad that we are able to partner. I did do a presentation to NECA board right before the COVID about three months ago. And since then we have been uh, uh, working on uh, an agreement, MO, MOA, and like I said, we have identified those projects. And, um, and you're correct, they are fully equipped to assist and move on those projects. So we are working with NECA. Um, also, uh, also uh, NECA has been uh, identified as a partner too in the COVID-19 water group as well. They're also assisting with the chapter watering points. Um, uh, uh, currently right now. So we appreciate um, NECA working with us. Uh, and both to um, Delegate Otto So and, and Delegate Daniel So, um, the CSC is something that we are addressing. I feel fully um, confident with Jim Martin and I uh, have a great deal of respect for her leadership in working with the chapters and the CSCs. Um, but the CSCs are interconnected. Um, currently, they have identified um, direct supervision or direct local supervision. Some of those local supervisors, I also want to mention that there is a level of training needed for supervision. That, that's not something we have in place currently. We, as large as DCD is and as large as the chapter um, employment section is, we haven't yet really kind of scratched the surface in, in establishing a training system for supervisors and staff. Last year, I was brought to my attention that we had a professional development day last November. Uh, I'm sorry, last December, uh, about six, six, seven months ago. And that was the first time DCD had a professional development training for staff. Um, so we utilized um, uh, local Navajo um uh, training with Mr. Harvey, Mr. Pax Harvey, and we have identified areas for training for both the supervisor and for staff at the chapter level. Um, and th again, that that had not been um, done in the past, um, but with the leadership of Ms. Jim Martin and Mr. Harvey, we had um, uh, training. I, what my point is is. It's, it's easy to identify an individual like the CSC or the chapter manager and then to oust them. But really, they're interconnected with um, the type of supervision that is, that is um, uh, overlooking them. Uh, and then there has to be some performance measures 
both by the supervisor and the CSC and the chapter manager. So we really have to move toward a more performance-based, outcome-based um, um, type of work environment at the chapter level. And, and um, that, I believe, we have the capacity to do that, um, especially now with Ms. Jim Martin and her experience uh, in personnel and her experience in um, addressing um, conflict resolution and addressing um, professional development. So uh, that's certainly something ASC um, we, we have discussed and we want to continue to move forward with that. Also, delegates, so um, we, we will, uh, Division of Community Development and CPND, we alternate with IAD in the uh, recon meetings for capital outlay. We also list um, in our master spreadsheet the project managers and the um, updates. It was our turn to do the recon meeting. We were scheduled to host the recon meeting in April, um, but because of the COVID-19, things have been postponed, And um, but we are still committed and we still have our communication and relationship with IED to um, resume those recon meetings. We also adhere to the special conditions, and the special conditions also uh, list the similar requests that you are listing, so we do have that information available, and we can send um, New Mexico delegates our latest recon listing, um, so I can um, do that. <clears throat> Again, we have discussed um, uh, project updates potentially starting with Eastern Agency in the next week and a half that I'm coordinating with CPMD and legislative staff, Ms. Um, Ms. Yazi. So we'll, we'll um, want to cover all of the New Mexico areas as well. And um, I do appreciate and very appreciative of the advocacy for the funding um, for the New Mexico project. We want to honor that, and we want to remain committed in completing those projects. And lastly, um, Delegate So, um, I appreciate your support um, and your partnership and collaboration um, as we've witnessed and, and have some of these trials, uh, ups and downs with uh, chapters. Um, and as you mentioned, um, with the, with the burial, um, situation with the family and, um, uh, we do plan to address that and we do seek, um, the support of council, uh, as we move forward with RDC. And so speaker, um, that concludes my responses and my remarks. If you have. Well, thank you, Dr. Yellowman. That moving on down, I do have Honorable Freeland. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, good morning, um, Dr. Yellowman and your staff. Um, thank you for the update. Um, this morning, I'm I'm calling in from the Hajjus chapter. Um, wanted to say thank you to the chapter and all the other chapters that are out there. Uh, working with our people, assisting the people in the EAG. Um, first of all, I wanted to um, also uh, commend you for your efforts, Dr. Yellowman, you and your staff. I know it's not easy, it's challenging at this time, but uh, thank you to you and, and of course, uh, uh, some LASTA and the ASC teams as well. And we have Casey, who has been helpful out here in Crown Point. Um, we really appreciate his communication and working with the central staff um, out here in the chapters that um, are the eight chapters I represent. Um, in regards to the New Mexico Capital LA, um, I know there's going to be a special session coming up in July, and excuse me, in June on, I think it's on the 16th, I believe, in Santa Fe, but a lot of those capital projects are, are already frozen, and it looks like the state is going to be taking back a lot of the, of the capital LA. Um, so um, 
you know, we're 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 gonna looks like we'll be re- reverting some some projects, but um, I, we haven't heard anything yet in regards to the travel infrastructure fund. There was I know some proposals that were submitted. Uh, maybe something to ask um, Secretary Trujillo. Uh, what's the status of those TIF uh, TIF awards? If they've been looked at, because that's a separate pot of money that our chapters were looking forward to receiving uh, potentially. Um, in regards to our chapters. Um, I know there's been some talk as far as prevention is concerned. How can we best mitigate, uh, use mitigation practices, but also help our chapters with prevention and yeah. Um There's that device that the airlines use um, for disinfecting and maybe look at um, mechanical doors or look at temperature or taking temperatures of, of constituents. Those were some of the advice that I've been getting from some of our chapters but um, safe practices, I guess, is what they're what they're looking at. Um, really good advice um, on on that that uh, part of discussion, as far as how we can best utilize prevention measures at the chapter level. But um, I don't know how, what those devices are called that the airlines use to disinfect their their airplanes. But the same can be utilized for chapters, possibly uh, maybe utilizing the the CARES money. Um, and then the temperature uh, gauges, as well as automated doors. So I just wanted to bring that up in regards to prevention. So but thank you, uh, Dr. Yellman, DCD staff, and all of the other staff members at uh, Division Community Development here in Tago. With that, uh, thank you, Honorable Freeland. Let me go down to Honorable Amber Crowdy. Madam Chair Crowdy, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Um, <clears throat> Foley, I'm actually here. I'm actually here helping my chapters with some hand sanitizer and cleanser, which um, leads me into. Um, I want to say that I think. Uh, in not seeing your plan or not seeing the actual amount that's being requested, uh, we would need um, to empower all 110 um, of our chapters to not only have an emergency plan, but have the appropriate tools to um, implement the plan. Uh, this means training. This means active coordination. Um, this means even... Um, doing uh, those run-throughs and scenarios and looking at how um, rural addressing intersects with our community assessment. Uh, we should have real-time data on where individuals are. For example, 10 minutes ago, a text from a community member, high-risk individual, no running water, no electricity, is positive with the virus and has no way to communicate to get their needs met. No way of communication. And so um, in this day and age, I think it's paramount that we have a plan and it starts with chapter coordination. It means support from the office of the president, vice president, health command, with council. Because when we talk about humanitarian efforts, every political decision has to put, be put to the side. And if we're making decisions based off of politics, then that person needs to stand down because we're talking about human life. And I also want to um, make sure that in this plan and in this community response that um, we look at how we can uh, build up through a regional response. I have cert certified teams um, on the ground in my district ready to be deployed. Uh, there was just no there was just no coordination with them, and I also then want to state on where I think community development um, plays a huge critical role in this is in the uh, rural addressing how we map this out, and then how are we going to partner with community relief efforts who are filling in the gaps where the government simply does not have the manpower, um, and so we have volunteers on the ground. We have um, folks who want to help, but there's just a disconnect. And so I think that's critical in how we talk about this response to COVID um, because there's, there's other issues that we need to discuss 
But if we can all just focus in, what is our response to COVID? How then are we going to organize our communities to best meet the needs of our people? And then looking at how do we protect um, chapter employees, DEP employees, and then um, trying to make sure that reevaluate our own health insurance. Um, what do we need to do uh, to provide them a safe work environment, to provide them the medical care that they need, the access to testing? And so it's a multifaceted um, approach. And so I'm a bit concerned that we do not have a document in hand on how and what funding is needed uh, to make sure that we, because the potential is with all the challenges that you discussed regarding conflict, that goes with training, that goes with monitoring, that's on us as a government, as a mother government. What I'm looking at is then what are the people's needs and how do we get there? And so I'm willing to partner on that, but I, I need to know what is the request at the chapter level? How do we get rural addressing? How do we get enough warehouses out there where they can store uh, their needed supplies and equipment? Uh, thank you, and I look forward to those answers. I'm back on mute. <coughs> Thank you, uh, Madam Chair Cardi. With that, uh, let me go back to Dr. Yellowman. I know I have Honorable Freeland and Madam Chair Cardi having uh, questions and comments, uh, Dr. Yellowman. So the floor is yours again. I can't have speaker. I know I can't have Delegate Freeland. Um, I uh, appreciate um, your your comments, support, and and questions as well and um and really uh uh admire the coordination at the eastern agency area as well and um have very good leadership chapter leadership and communication um <clears throat> i will um inquire and find out a little bit more about the the tiff awards there was a tiff meeting but there was only one item um discussed back in um, May, uh, in the early May, and, um, and it was not related to a Navajo Nation project. Since then, um, things are put on hold, and it was understood from the TIF meeting, <clears throat> um, but I'll inquire uh, again on the TIF awards. And as far as the prevention, um, going forward, I did mention early on on the report that we do have staff looking into ter certain types of thermometers that might have to be procured um, or um, made available as a resource listing. Um, so we do have a resource listing. We do have um, uh, uh, a page dedicated to the DCD and the DCD website of um, COVID-related numbers and data. Um, so I think our staff who were working on that throughout the pandemic, um, <clears throat> a, lot of, a lot of information comes to DCD. We tried to get that information back out to the chapters. It's funding-related. It's, um, it's educational-related. Um, it's a resource listing, and it is on the DCD website. Um, but I'll inquire a little bit more uh, regarding the sprays. There are some sprays that can be made um, locally with a certain um, uh, cleaning um, chemicals, and then there's some that needs to be purchased. My concern is Delegate Freeland that I mentioned earlier is um, the liability. I mean, I don't, I don't want to recommend, um, uh, like I mentioned earlier, you go, I will go to the post office here and they're using a shower curtain. And if I say, if I, from the Division of Community Development say, hey, go ahead and just buy some shower curtains and put them up in the chapter. And then there's an actual exposure that happens. That's, there's, there's no, there's no research that says that there's a shower curtain that prevents or um, slows the spread of COVID. So there's some liability here that is um, um, 
that needs to be taken. And I'm very careful as to the recommendations that we put on paper. I also don't want to say, well, if you mix three-fourths Clorox and whatever, half a gallon of water, you know, you can spray that around the chapter. I, I'm personally not sure what is in the spray bottle that bashes, but they spray the shopping carts there. So there's some liability issues that I want to be careful with um, that especially is coming from DCD. And I, I vet, th- I vet um, our communication through DOJ, and it has to be, um, I guess, certified, <laughs> certified stamped approval by HCOC, or we do have um, on-site here CDC and FEMA members here um, who have been providing excellent technical assistance in guiding us through some of these major decisions and um, uh, uh, responses. So I, 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 I I do rely on their um, expertise um, during this time. So I guess what I'm saying is um, um, it just has to be a solid, legitimate plan that um, I, I, want to, I want to come from DCD. Um, I don't want... Dr. Yeoman, are you still there? Dr. Yeoman? Dr. Yeoman. Are you still there? Oh, sorry, I got uh, my phone got off there. Okay. Okay. The floor is still yours. Um, okay. So I'll just I'll end there, but I uh, we are looking at some of those uh, equipment and necessary um, recommended items that chapters may need, like the thermometers, the cleaning. I did mention earlier some calculations and PPEs. Um, we do have um, the protective wear and the face shield for the excavators. <clears throat> um, so I, I uh, unfortunately, that's a sensitive topic, but I do believe that the chapter should have that equipment for those excavators, um, and they should be full, fully protected with the PPEs. So those are um, um, coming from DCD. Um, and then again, the sprays and the different um, uh, chemicals, the, the this type of chemicals that are needed at the chapters. So um, we do have staff looking into what it would take to outfit the chapters with those. Uh, and then moving on to uh, Delegate Amber Crotty. Uh, emergency plan um, that is definitely some um, that is definitely uh, something that uh, ASC um, Ms. Jen Martin and SPPS staff have been discussing um, and um, <clears throat> saw the need early on for the regional emergency plan. Um, Ms. Jim Martin has experienced. Um, both in the command ICS command structure as well as um, emergency management plan, and <clears throat> really was our connection through HCOC during this whole time. Um, and I, I did mention early on in the report um, the training, the training that's necessary for both chapter staff and chapter officials. Um, again, back to the safety um, and being disciplined. Um, there are online measures. There are the um, uh, NIMS 100, 700, but I also imagine there's going to be a lot more resources coming out that are COVID-related. Um, and 
I just I just have to advocate we cannot be relaxed at the chapter level when it comes to um, re- returning to some type of pre-COVID norm. We have to maintain discipline and we have to maintain um, some strict adherence to these these plans or these trainings and utilizing these trainings. Um, I appreciate and um, like the the drills um, that are necessary. Those drills um, are necessary. I think we do need to exercise some type of deployment type of drill, distribution type of drill. Um, I appreciate that early on at the end of April or mid-April, that the chapters went really went into their emergency implementation plan and utilized their distribution plans, the zero contact plans. Um, in hindsight, our chapters responded the best they could um, in the last two months, and the chapters um, acted fast and acted swiftly um, during the pandemic. Nothing was, um, nothing, there was no, there was no playbook for this. There was no plays designed, um, and every chapter acted very fast. And leadership uh, rose out of that from chapter staff and chapter officials, um, and leadership all around. I really appreciate that. That was not, uh, that was noticed. It was not unnoticed. So, rural adjusting plays a large role in all of this. Um, I uh, 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 did reach out. I uh, was have been in contact with a Navajo-owned um, app company. I know we have technology, and rural adjusting um, relies on on technology. We can and should use technology. Um, but at the same, how do we reach some of our, our, our elderly great grandparents who live remotely way out, out, um, off the main road? We still have to have a mechanism of communicating and, and delivering information and food to our, um, to our elderly that live so far out. So although we do have technology today and I'm definitely um, more than open and willing to incorporate technology and making sure that rural addressing, rural rural addressing is more than just using technology um, and it's more than a privilege of having our addresses marked. Um, It's a safety concern and it's... um, it's an emergency concern. There are certain areas um, throughout Navajo Nation that that are just not outfitted. Those um, dead zones is what they refer to them as. They just do not have the capacity to have some type of um, Wi-Fi capacity or some type of service. And um, we, we just have to find ways to get over that, past that, and through that so that we can outfit the Navajo Nation um, with uh, uh, both rural addressing and um, uh, Wi-Fi capacity and capability. Um, It's beyond a privilege and it's beyond a need. It's emergency. And that was also shown during the pandemic. I also believe in real time data as you mentioned as you mentioned, and there's technology that can assist us in real time. Um, there were some <clears throat> I don't want to say conflicting, but there were some conversations that were heated during the last two months regarding the the type of definition and the type of um, detail that will be revealed as to case positive families. Um, I did look out to see how other smaller communities throughout Indian country address the data. 
some of the data for the smaller communities. Um, so, for example, like in New Mexico, we have smaller villages and other parts of the United States. There are smaller tribal communities. Um, they were able to address their data um, um, by by heat zones. They were there were a variety of ways of addressing their data, but they all still had to adhere to HIPAA and privacy compliance of the patient. So, although we we want to know the information, um, it's still the individual privacy act. Um, that has to be adhered to. So th that's why I feel like there was some heavier conversations or deeper conversations that was occurring um, during the pandemic here. There were also some communities that had conflict and disruption because um, the smaller communities revealed where individuals lived that were case positive, and that led to um, conflict in the smaller communities outside of Navajo. So I did kind of look around and see how were other tribal communities um, uh, disclosing um, uh, their data um, during this pandemic. <clears throat> um, so data is sensitive, and um, but what I've learned over the years is data represents a family and data represents our community members. And it has to be um, sensitive. We have to be sensitive as to how we reveal the data and interpret the data. So I do believe in real time, and I do believe in utilizing technology um, uh, uh, currently. And um, there are ways that we can move forward in um, uh, incorporating technology into um, uh, the COVID-19 efforts. <clears throat> I, as I mentioned, I did reach out to a young Navajo um, company um, in um, discussing an app on food distribution or even um, looking at other alternative ways of reaching out to elders. Um, so I'm still in discussion with that. I did see how this particular company um, uh, created other types of apps um, within their company, and I, I believe there, uh, there is a way to um, assist us in addressing either the needs of the elders or the rural areas <clears throat> in food distribution um, in this type of an app. Uh, so I'm still working on that and, um, and hope that it leads to an outcome shortly. So, Delegate Crotty, I, I hope I... Um, answered your questions on the emergency plan, the regional response. Um, regional response is a large task. We also do have the Department of Emergency Management and the Department of Public Safety um, that we work closely with. Um, so there's a partnership already there to put the groundwork for the regional response. Um, and uh, we just really have to be much more prepared here and move forward. So I appreciate the questions and I hope I answered the emergency plan, emergency response, the regional response, rural addressing, real time data, the training and the drills necessary. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Gellerman. With that, let me go ahead and move on down to Honorable Eugene So. The floor is yours, sir. Yeah, Joe, shouldn't I? Nope. Dr. Gellerman, I see Diego, Yate, David Yen, and she can appoint me. Or 
See, he was the head man. And all the in laws. We got the development of a, a hospital and nursing home, a senior citizen in that NTU, a Department of Act, Rec Center, and uh, Resource Enforcement, Youth Organization, NT, uh, NHA, Plan of District Court Correction, Academy Rehab. We um, rehab, we got BIA, we got Navajo Nation, RBD, or we got Chai School, Junior High, but three elementary, we got National Park Service, I got National Parks and Recreation, Navajo Nation Parks and Recreation, uh, and two, two of the oldest churches are there. I don't know. So, I my question is that uh, Dana, that this is that. Where does the Navajo Nation Council have authority over any division within the Navajo Nation government? So the only time division is to come uh, to be, before the Navajo Nation is for the plan operation approval or target is to, and then if they want to reamend it or during a budget hearing. But the plan ration, I probably had it. I'm pretty sure, uh, uh, Dr. Yellman, you understand that, and I commend you for what you're doing. Apen and Nish, Abichetni, uh, Council Delegate, is So you're already doing with the president. The crack could have a non Nish, the doctor said, Lido, the Nish, Nish. Okay, did you Oversight, you can see they visit the car with in that kind of operation who the standing committee who you oversight with. But uh, um, the preparation beyond that, uh, the oversight, you know, it's a old name, it's a lot of people who are not need on this. I'm sorry, I'm just We already appointed you, we already uh, amended your plan of operation, we we sent you across and uh. Are you living? Are you working under the president as a Navajo Nation president now? So that is a, a question that I have. But um, of course, uh, the uh, my understanding, uh, the reason of the, all the division of transportation is approved. But I go, I'm just curious. And any time, yes, if we want to come back to reamend it, then we come in again. But uh, the great council does they come in, in. So. All these reports to you, uh, all the vision directors, do they confer with the Navajo president before the reporting to the Navajo Nation Council? So don't bond this case. Why should it be? What not to be? How to be? How, even why a report? Who makes you jump more, executive or the legislature? It, 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 it concerns me because she got, after we let you go into the president and with your transformation, I'm pretty sure you guys know what you're doing already. Can you hear me? Hello? 
Yes, we can. Oh. We can hear you. I can hear you. We can hear you. Okay, I will have to start in each of these. <laughs> I will have to each of these. So that's the that's the reason no, for um halit ah eh yes nishita at the end of the day some open just the question you know is some of these which means that we're in this in the way of progress. The money should just go straight to the president, and then let him distribute how the the act says the chairs and I don't have a copy has on it. I'm pretty sure the new director and their council understand already. I die with my husband. So why or not we touch it? Ah, the council doesn't need to need to don't touch it. Need to don't touch it. They can so yet also that the three weeks that really so. No, oh, no, you know, it 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 don't it don't rhyme right with me, what we're doing. So, what are you? Oh, no, the best kids and so. For me, this this is just off up of my own opinion. We would just give the money to the president, let him distribute as how it should be used by the action. It ah, at I top it, I'm not sure I top it. It's at the hot side or yeah. Like I said the other day, this COVID-19 is not for talking; it's for action right now, or even a week ago. Over 200 quillet macaron. So it, that me, that to me concerns me. And we're here with the money-based car dealer. What's that? What you need? That's my question. I don't know about you, Council Delegates, but that's my question. I don't know about that. I don't feel right about it. I just, you know, since I opened state, okay, just, um, the ask, just for all the way, such a question, such a baby house. I think we need to be. Maybe put into consideration. I I I I I grew them up with vitamins. As soon as possible, because I know I wouldn't um, have enough for all the uh, food groups. I mean, all the food groups. See, so I test the yeast. So I usually give them vitamins. So I was a single parent. I ate the house. Kadasa the bathroom. The house. So ate. I got the yahoo stuff. Uh, today, to this day, I, I still use the vitamins and my grandkids. So, Craig, yeah, cut another one from Obama's this case. I was wondering if, they, if, they, uh, if all these uh, distributions, they have vitamins in there. It would, I just thought it would really help. I just, this is just my, my opinion. I don't the irritation. I don't the irritation. I don't need No more irritation. I don't need the treasure of the president. I don't need I don't need bathroom addition to be a cliche out house at all. A A I don't if I can't add on anything on it because if it feels I had to move it again. Hey Craig, I I can't add on anything to that. I don't know what they meant by bathroom addition. I don't I don't have running water in my house. I don't have to go to the chat the house. That's what I did right in the middle of Chinley. Behind that special one. So I don't have running water and I don't have electricity. I don't want um, to let you know for all those who have left before us because of the COVID-19. May they rest in peace all. I don't want to keep our question. I don't think so. I don't want to keep our question. 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 Because they're all our family. They're all our blood. They're all our people. It's up on this case. I don't that those that has recovered. I don't that negative test up the We should be very happy for all these people that recovered and then the ones that are negative and then going forward into it. That's what I would want to. I don't that most of these are the heroes. Specialties and all these heroes, the first responders, they ask you we need to really uh, pray for them daily. Should it as us all what's all that is in the just now not us 
how I am is how my grandpa and grandma made me. I'm always with God and try to talk to God. It's his will, but no matter what, what I in Asha. But these days, the question is, son, Khalid, I in here, I couldn't end the kitchen. It's beyond that. It's yours. You're already doing your job. You're already doing what you're doing. So, okay, they have my question today, and I guess, oh, could I just be all shared? You didn't know, we need to work, we need to start getting rid of that money. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Eugene. So with that, let me go down to Vice Chair Walker, and then I'll come back to you, uh, Dr. Yellowman. Vice Chair Walker. Good morning. Yes, uh, Chair, good morning, and uh, committee members, other staff, other uh, the audience we have this morning on this Nabikiyatia call, other uh, presenter, Dr. Yellowman, Bathroom additions again. Bathroom additions in our um, communities, at the homes, places where those uh, plumbing, running water, plumbing, bathroom fixtures. Showers, all that's needed. So, bathroom additions on the Kaho, eight in that part of the door, and Kiki, eight about a Shindan, then better Hadla, project ready, and then those that don't have it may be considered as project uh, that's not ready. A quake, uh, Habansen, Kis Lako, I guess just a recommendation would be to have. Uh, DCD to, uh, you know, be, I, I know you're ahead, a step ahead, several steps ahead of what we're, what, what we're talking about here. Uh, as far as um, water, water line extensions and sanitation facilities. I think it'd be larger. Prototype for bathroom addition, some standardized uniform design that can be uh, considered by local chapters. That would be helping chapters. Uh, that way chapters don't have to start from scratch. Hey, uh, yeah, I know there's a lot more to it, but simply the concept, I, I wanted to uh, just include that in today's um, discussion here. Hey, Kateko. Uh, the second is the uh, CERT team, reforming, forming or reforming CERT. Uh, and then, of course, with, a, with a, an additional uh, mission, which is to participate or to assist communities in this COVID-19 environment. I would fully support that, that development, that there be uh, a local uh, that can help communities in in this in this uh, crisis that we're in for now and then the future I get a, a group something similar to uh, land use planning committee called during every chapter this could be done I think it's very um, I think no one would disagree that such a group is needed as a resource as additional help as a matter of fact they're very much needed where I Communities are relying on volunteers. It is that chapter staff. Could that a happen? Yeah. So if that the tico, that is it. That is so let. So if need be, uh, one of us delegates, uh, even myself, would be willing to sponsor uh, legislation to to include that in Title 26. You know, in addition to land use planning committees, the emergency committee, na hadong. As you mentioned, CERT. So, a a cut out a a dan a a a a a pa wind o a yat a to bohanet sa. A cut ah sinant ah speaker chair committee members and uh, just wanted to include that in today's uh, remarks. And I will certainly follow up with Dr. Yellowman. See how I can be a further assistance. I'm going to drop off call. Let this call get on another call. Uh, that's how our 
day is going here. There's a lot of overlap in calls, but I'll be back. Yeah. And, uh, Thank you. That let me go back to Dr. Yellowman. Dr. Yellowman, the floor is yours on uh, all over Eugene So and uh, Vice Chair Walker's comments. And uh, I think Eugene So had a question too as well. Thank you, Dr. Yellowman. Thank you, Speaker. I do you have a delegate Eugene So? My my mother was a teacher with Marjorie Thomas for many years, and I remember her being the principal at Tuba City Elementary School. So, yeah, it's a, um, <clears throat> I don't, yeah, um, I, I believe and can say that we are, uh, Gilman? doing our best. I'm okay. Here. We okay. Are, uh, we're, we're doing um, we're 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 doing more than our best here, and uh, we've never never seen anything like this. And uh, I commend uh, my colleagues, uh, Dr. Jim uh, Delmar, Jesse Delmar, Chief Francisco, the leadership uh, for really. Uh, King, uh, endlessly and uh, felt like 24 hours, seven days a week, our staff as well. And during this time, uh, you can really tell who is dedicated to the Navajo people and who is dedicated to serving the Navajo people. And during this pandemic, um, those who were Serving the Navajo people were separated from 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 those who who maybe chose not to, and um, and I appreciate all of the staff that were coming in, and we had done things we've never done before, and we had to create and put together things that we never thought we would put together. I personally never thought I would be putting together a mass burial plan. And we have staff here who was who were <clears throat> um, operating forklifts and distributing food items and many people too throughout the Navajo Nation and at the chapter level. Never thought we would be doing some of these things. So um, I appreciate your your comments and and your questions, delegate. So um the last time the DCD uh, plan of operation was approved was in 2016, and um, the leadership then may have had different priorities or different um, uh, different challenges. And the reason why we are wanting to make changes um, for DCD um, and for our plan of operation is be because things have changed, things have evolved. <clears throat> it's a it's a way of transparency. It allows me to make the necessary changes to respond to the Navajo Nation people. Um, I'm able to make those changes. Some I'm able to make internally um, based on need, and then others are based on the direction of um, the division and the direction of the leadership. Um, I uh, so the, so amending and making those changes to the plan of operations and updating them are are important to both the transparency and both to addressing the concerns that not only have been brought up but respect well. Yes, respectfully speaking, but there also have been quite a few things that were neglected in the past by previous um, um, individuals who, who were in this position. Something, like I mentioned earlier, the Solid Waste Management Plan was abolished. It sits nowhere in the Navajo Nation. That just blows my mind that that, 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 that had happened and that could happen. 
and now we have to um, generate that service again. And um, and be, as a result of abolishing the solid waste management program and plan, there could there possibly is some increases in illegal dumping, um, et cetera. So um, so anyway, some things were neglected, some things were um, not addressed fully, and as a result, um, uh, uh, there's quite a few things that have. Um, been presented to myself in in the 15 months that I've been here that need to be addressed um, that can uh, open the, the the gateway so to speak to better services and that's what I want um, BCD to be a part of is better services improved services um, justifiable services and um, so amending our plan of operation and having the support of leadership to do so is important. Um, so thank you, Eugene. So uh, I'll move on to um, Delegate Walker. Um, and I appreciate Delegate Walker's leadership um, to, to um, RDC oversight and um, his ability to communicate and support um, Division of Community Development. And um, uh, we are um, uh, addressing and we are um, um, looking at those regional responses and those um, uh, emergency plans and needing to move forward on that delegate walker. And, um, and then the bathroom additions. Those bathroom additions are <coughs> um, important um, and we can, offer a model, maybe several models, um, so that we're not getting tied up into the details. And I, I appreciate that recommendation. Um, the other thing is um, bathroom additions are also tied to family, um, uh, family ownership, family consent. So many of those things need to be considered in order to move forward. Um, and and then the the power line and water line extensions to the families as well. There's quite a bit of um, I don't want to say waiver, but there's quite a bit of um, policies and um, uh, uh, internal agreements that need to be made between NTUA, NECA, uh, the Division of Natural Resources. A lot of those art clearances, those biological clearances. The, the uh, department, Navajo Nation Department of EPA, a lot of those internal communications need to occur um, to move forward. Um, and that's certainly been the topic the last few weeks with the CARES funding. The CARES Act funding is um, amending and addressing those internal and external policies. So thank you, Delegate Walker. Um, it's In a way, it's a blessing in disguise that we have to uh, address and lift some of those, um, uh, I don't know if they're red tape, but I'm sure they were placed there for a reason at one time, but now they have caused some complexities in just getting some basic services to the Navajo people. But we certainly have the opportunity now to address them and lift some of those, um, uh, I guess, red tape, so to speak. And uh, unfortunately, sometimes many of our people um, out throughout Navajo Nation and at the chapter level, you know, they just, they view, that's what their impression is. That's what their view is of us um, and, and even in DCD that we're, we're just red tape to the Navajo people. And now we have an opportunity to change that. We have an opportunity to lift that. And I really lean on leadership to partner and collaborate so that we can remove some of these challenges and barriers that have been chronic um, to the Navajo people. So, uh, Speaker, I, I hope I answered those questions and I appreciate the comments from um, the 24th Navajo Nation Council. Thank you. Thank you, Delegate Walker. Thank you very much. Uh Dr. Yellowman for those uh, comments and 
responses to my colleagues. Uh, I know that uh, I do have uh, Honorable Herman Daniels on the line. Honorable Daniels, did you have a comment or a question? Uh, speaker, this is Elmer Begay. I want to ask a question too. Is he good? Oh man, I'm just letting. If uh, Honorable Daniels is not on, then let me go over to Honor Elmer Begay. Mr. Begay. Uh, back to uh, um, speaker. So, uh, are we um, um, the 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 registration one Yeah. Speaker. Can, um, I'm hearing some individuals that are at the drive-through possibility. Uh, there are some individuals on the road, individuals talking to their kids. Can you please mute your phones, please? Go ahead. I'm going to be. Honorable Elmer Begay. So back to um, speaker. Um, my question uh, overall is that um, so the, um, I think um, the chapter um, and then the they are supporting the the one fifteen twenty uh, resolution. Um, most of them are asking. Uh, um, I know that um, there's a five day comment period, but some of the chapters they submitted their resolution. Then after that, you know, they, they, they were still coming in because of the um, the, the the meetings that they that they were having. So, but they, I turned in some uh, resolutions to that regarding that, and um, um, they wanted to know the, how the expenditure plan is going to be coming in if it if it if it's approved or just on this legislation if we can move forward. I think they they they're really concerned about this um, um, the all the resolutions, all the, um, some of those projects that they put in. And and the thing about it is that they're really, uh, on the Southwest part of the reservation, there's some contractors that we have. There's some people that are, like, um, they, have, they have their own um, um, business. They're like sur surveyors, and they can do biological surveys. And some of them are, you know, they're, they're, they have their contractors. They want to know they're really um, pushing that you know, where we could able to help uh, the nation to expedite some of these uh, projects. So um, the thing about it is that I don't think they would need an expert to, to, to be hired to, to do this because right now we, we got a call and then there's an uh, uh, email that came out to these chapters from the, um, from the uh, former delegate um, um, Mr. Leonard Sosi explaining that he needs all this information on the water, like what size it is, where is it at, and what the, what's the, the, the status on it, and things like that. So they're already saying that, hey, who's getting higher here? We, we already know this. What are we going to do to this whole information that we know to give to another person and they can start running with it? So, that, hey, why, why don't we just give it to us and then we know, we know the, the priorities. We know we know where it is. We, we, we know where we don't want to share this information if people doesn't know anything about it to get hired for that. So, well, my question is, you know, that uh, I think they really need to, um, when we're talking about the uh, legislation right now, and we need to find, we, I think their, their main concern is that when are we going to start working on the, the expenditure plan? And I think they're ready for it. You know, that's, I think that's what, the 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 um the main the main point is uh, maybe just this question to you, um um uh, speaker, the how how we can get this expenditure plan together right now because they they they, they know already how much um um parole element just uh, my my two, my my two, um explained it that uh, um listen to that is that they still haven't move the uh, CSM funds projects it is it's, it's just, I guess it's backlog of, of all projects there so they believe that it's now getting we should get to the um, local contractors um, neighborhood business people to, to, 
to, to, to be involved in it. So that will be my, my question to you, um, uh, Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Honor. Uh, Honorable Elmer Begay, let me go down to Honorable Wilson Stewart, then I'll go back to uh, Dr. Yellowman. Thank you, um, Tilla, the speaker, and the um, colleague on the line, I don't know Dr. Yellowman, but yeah, in on, uh, they, um, I'm calling in from Sawmill. Uh, so we just got done our planning meeting this morning, Otto. Uh, we're getting ready for our afternoon meeting again. Because a question from the uh, chapter, Dangi Aya, all this week we've been doing planning meetings. So, question from the staff is: Is there going to? And you may have already said this. I just jumped on the line not too long ago, about an hour ago, Dada. Is there a testing for the staff? I don't that these um, uh, temporary staff are being hired to to assist the permanent staff that don't know how to do the operations for heavy equipment and other stuff like that, or that need assistance with daily operations. A, that Higgy, is there going to be some type of testing for them as well as validation employees? Arunda, so A, yeah, I am uh, requesting from the chapters, for the four chapters, Higgy, to assist me with a um, resolution asking that there be some type of uh, implementation plan, phase plan, that oh, yeah, to have employees, including the chapters, um, staff to turn back to work. You just mentioned it when I jumped on line, you were talking about the um, PPE and the thermostat needed and the, the, um, the um, windows, plexiglass, you were talking about those when I, when I jumped on the line. So that, that's where I was, I had jumped on the line and hearing, hearing you speak of those things. Because those are the questions that I have, Dr. Yellowman, on behalf of the, the chapters I represent and the leadership from there. Out on the, um, the other one that um, I know that they were asking about was um, for the continued services of the water and trash. Are, are the, 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 the bins are, that, that we're getting, is there a way that we can get an increase in bins uh, at the chapters that are non certified that may be um, running low on some money? just in case, because right now the bins cost, each of the chapters that I represent, they cost about maybe over a thousand per month. And right now we're depleting our funds in that area because we're requesting for two bins. So that's 2,000 and, and, and um, that the chapters each are spending. So all together for all four, at 8,000 that goes back to Navajo sanitation um, within one month for my four chapters. So those are areas that we, that we want to, to ask um, you about this morning. I'll quit going back on mute. Hey, with that, I'm go back to Dr. Yellowman. Dr. Yellowman, the floor is yours again. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker Damon, um, I almost said good morning, but it's, it's noon now. So I'll try to go faster here. Um, so Delegate Suche Elmer Begay, um, we are, we are, uh, that is the goal, is moving forward on establishing an expenditure plan that uh, represents the needs of the Navajo people. Um, there, there is a, um, compilation of projects. I, I shared with you what DCD is authorized in in those projects, but those projects have also been shared. Um, as you mentioned, Mr. Sosi, Leonard Sosi, had sent out some communication to chapters. <clears throat> um, in that memo states that it is a form of tribal or consultation and communication and we want to make sure that we uh, hear from the chapters. Um, uh, but I also know and understand that there have been multiple forms of communication previously with the chapters. 
There have been the um, chapter proposals through Citizen. Also, during the um, um, uh, uh, pre um, the pre inauguration of um, President Nez and um, Vice President Lizer, um, the President uh, elect Nez did visit more than seventy chapters in hearing and listening to the communities. There have been um, hearings prior, <clears throat> so it, it is well documented what the needs are. Now is just compiling the information and compiling the information in a way that is um, project ready and also compiling the information that allows us to understand the capacity of those projects. For example, if, if we're looking at projects that are scattered, <clears throat> those, those are important, but they only may benefit one or two family members. Whereas if we're looking at major um, lines, um, that, expand, that uh, expands the capacity to serve um, more families. So we have to look at what projects are we looking at that really um, encompasses the Navajo Nation. Um, but but I, I want to make sure that I'm clear that scattered projects are also important too and needed. So those are, those are some areas of compiling the information. Um, certainly we're getting information from IHS. They have been, um, they've reported NTUA, Department of Water uh, Resources, um, Division of Natural Service, uh, Division of Natural Resources. We also have other water line and power line projects. Other water line, pro other water projects include like windmills and watersheds. <clears throat> so there's an extensive list that represents the Navajo people. And like you, um, I want to see the uh, plan. Dr. Yellowman, still there? Hello? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I should say, Elmer, we do want to see the expenditure plan happen. And we also want to utilize um, our priority ones, um, like NETA. But we also want to move on these projects, and that might include uh, reviewing and utilizing outside vendors as well. But nonetheless, the priority is to complete these projects. The, um, Greater priority is to keep the Navajo, um, and that's what our people deserve. So we are working um, on these listings. These listings have been shared um, and converted over to a um, uh, mass master list for consideration for the expenditure, and and um, and have also been shared with the 24th Navajo Nation Council as other reports have been given. So um, I hope I answered um, Delegate Elmer Begay's question. <clears throat> also moving on to Delegate Wilson Stewart, uh, appreciate um, uh, his support as a, as a member of RDC and as a member of Oversight. Um, I was mentioning early on in my report that the reopening phase of um, chapters is uh, a major task um, in making sure that those phase one implementation plans of reopening and keeping this chapter safe entails quite a bit. Um, we are still working on that and we hope to include um, an orientation and as Ms. Jim Martin calls it, an orientation blitz. <laughs> um, uh, to all the chapter officials and chapter staff, we need to just uh, 
utilize training methods <clears throat> and conference methods and making sure that our chapter officials and chapter staff are clear on the reopening of phase one and phase two of the chapters. Ultimately, ultimately we know that the chapters are um, hubs of um, our communities. And I personally do not want to see any increases in positive cases with the reopening of the chapters. Our margin of error is really slim. And when we open, we pretty much have to do it right. Otherwise, if there's any relaxed implementation um, that causes risk and exposure. So we, we can't. We can't be um, careless in this. We have to open up the chapters with clear communication, and we have to have buy-in and attention from chapter officials and chapter staff. Um, otherwise, we don't want them to relapse or default into the pre-COVID of being um, non-disciplined to some of these CDC recommendations and HCOC recommendations. So Delegate Wilson-Stewart, um, I am working on the plan and we hope to have some draft reviewed by DOJ shortly. Uh, I did mention the need for um, and support for trash and solid waste that was very evident during the pandemic <clears throat> and many chapters did receive um, services from Navajo Nation Sanitation. And at this point, we just need to continue those services because they were already in need, much like water. Uh, water, water delivery, water tanks being delivered during this emergency. Um, that, that just shows you how much our people have gone without. And now we get, we've given, they've received water and now they've received sanitation. And now we, we, we just can't take it away. I, I, I just, I'm not in support of that logic. So I'm trying to find ways to keep the water, to keep the water flow coming in. Um, but at some point we do have to, um, at some point some of these donations like water bottles, the, the water, They'll, they'll, they'll end and we'll have to be self-sufficient on our own while maintaining the same quantity of need that was needed during the pandemic. So we have a lot of work cut out for ourselves, but I do agree that we are advocating for those services to continue. Um, some of the costs, many of the costs are falling on DCD. And we have been seeking funds, um, but we have um, slowly accruing um, many of those costs throughout Navajo Nation that result in um, uh, the, remi the remission of water tanks, the remission of um, transfer um, trash bins, and et cetera. So we, we have been... Um, we have been receiving those those costs and invoices, and I'll have to work with FEMA and HCOC in sorting out those costs. But uh, many of them are non-medical related, and they are related to the chapters. And I've we've been assuming those responsibility of those invoices. Um, so we will um, uh, continue to advocate and remain and keep those services out there. So, uh, Speaker, I believe I answered um, Delegate Stewart's um, questions, and um, I do try to remain um, available and accessible to all delegates. Um, many of them call or, or email or text, and I try to be very responsive. So if I miss anything, if there's anything I need to follow up on, uh, I'll do so. Speaker, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yellowman. Uh, for those responses and then for uh, listening in to my colleagues' uh, comments and suggestions. That, uh, everybody that's listening in on the World Wide Web, we're 
here at an Abikate committee meeting, a work session, uh, and uh, today we're discussing uh, recommendations for the Division of Community Development and uh, possible requests of funding and also requests for additional initiatives that the division is looking towards to uh, not only protect uh, individuals that are working directly under the division, but community development overseas and helps assist 110 chapters across the nation. And that's where we're looking to uh, see if there's some um, advice, some guidance, uh, more importantly, some suggestions from Dr. Yellowman, and that's what we're here. And then also getting some comments and some questions from colleagues of the 24th uh, Navajo Nation Navigate Committee. Uh, thank you very much for being part of this, colleagues. As we know, uh, Dr. Yellowman's job is she has a huge task under her division. Uh, we thank you for being a part of this discussion today, Dr. Yellowman. Uh, and thank you, colleagues, again, for um, asking some questions and referencing to some initiatives, most importantly, what we need to do in order for us to really protect our people out there in the forefront. Uh, through this pandemic and after this pandemic. So we're ready to move forth on that. So uh, colleagues, uh, if there's any comments, questions right now, additional ones, um, I don't have anybody else in the queue lined up. Speaker, you can yes. go. All right, let me go to Honorable Brown and to Eugene, Honorable Eugene. So Honorable Brown, go ahead. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to make sure um, I did hear Dr. Yellowman's response to my questions and comments. Um, Dr. Yellowman, I did not hear anything on the um, children be tow trash if we can get, and then one is the trash that's there, and then the other number two is the um, <clears throat> manpower to children be tow chapter. Number three is I just got off the phone. Also, I was on two different phone calls simultaneously. Um, so to me, to have their uh, chapter meeting, teleconference call. Um, <clears throat> so right now, with my three chapters, I would not recommend um, in-person chapter meetings. I still would recommend um, due to some of the hot spots, and it seems like um, COVID-19 is circling around. And I don't know if, if a new strand or many, many other types of strand are coming forward. Understanding through all these phone calls is now it's impacting infants, young children. Before it wasn't, but now it is. Um, we still have a lot of our, unfortunately, we still have a lot of our people out there who are um, using substance abuse, um, who are walking around saying that I'm immune, I can't do whatever I want. Therefore, I don't feel my communities are safe to open up chapters. So that would be my other recommendation is. I, I will stand on that, and my chapter officials, um, my manager also feel the same way. And I think that's so the um, safety of your CSCs also. Um, I want to keep a minimum amount of staff in your houses. And then the other thing is I want, to, I want to make sure that when we're talking from the Division of Community Development, working on this expenditure plan, that there would be, that there is going to be funding again, um, for um, disinfecting homes. And I would highly recommend Navajo-owned companies. Um, I believe that we should reinvest in our Navajo people and companies to do these um, essential services. Um, the other part to that would be, um, I want to make sure that there's um, funding that will be set aside to replace uh, mattresses, some clothing, some furniture for people who had to burn um, their, their, their mattresses and clothing and couches because the COVID is so embedded within the materials that it might have actually trickled down into um, deeper um, into the mattress and furniture. So those cannot be cleaned. And I see myself a lot of our people um, burning their, their stuff and their clothes. Um, that's how afraid and pe people are in a panic mode. And um, so I want to make sure that that is on the record and that, and um, <clears throat> And again, I, I heard you say, you know, with the project listing that um, that that are that the projects that are shovel ready are in fact there. I do have chapter resolutions and chapter letters 
um, that we will continue to forward um, to to our staff as well as yourself, Dr. Yellowman. I can't thank you. Have a good day. That uh, one by Gene So, floor is yours, sir. Uh, such a young man, she has a young position. So, all the division directors are not yet all Yego. Yego, she didn't pass me. All, all, um, where is all protested? I just remember something. Um, some of the food distribution, uh, I heard the other day or two days ago that <laughs> at Trinity High School that they were giving out bucks, and then, uh, I guess when they came home with those bucks, that they, they said one bus was all full of bananas, that's bananas only. And then one was chili. <laughs> I don't know if they're supposed to separate them or not. So that's what that's what they can do. Maybe you can inform or to uh, distribute those food out to the people. And we get we were getting a lot of donations. And my daughter is looking at a John Hopkins. Uh, she was on the NSNBC a few days ago, and she's going out all over the place giving out food to the eyes uh, what I know. So she don't she has. Then there's a lot of calls of that uh, donate that sponsored to me, and I. I just got right into the chapters, and also the that is we we got some two two uh, choppers uh, um, uh for that donation. I could just take out these years. So those are the things that we're doing out there, but we're trying to direct them to the the main place, some of them. But that, these other veterans, they just go straight to the veterans. Eighty, yes, all 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 shareholders. You know, I know we're doing a lot, and we're running. Ah, uh, she, ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah, they need because uh, we're. We we feel for the people. It's not that we need to keep them healthy. It is not that. Or hopefully on the other side we're going to understand what that really means. That we can all be in, uh, together again. That way instead of driving each other away daily. Or you all figure out that nobody can. Now you know we can't see each other. So I hope on the other side everything is better. Oh, she had a yeah, Dr. Yellows and all the division directors and all the speakers that she had and all my colleagues too. I mean, we're doing, I know you guys are doing a lot too. It is all shared with this year. Thank you. Uh, that, thank you uh, again to yourself too, Honorable uh, Eugene. So uh, let me go back to uh, Dr. Yellowman. The floor is yours. Thank you, Speaker. Okay. Thank you, Speaker. Good afternoon. Um, back to um, Delegate Nate Brown. Um, Nate Brown, we do support um, the services that were uh, set uh, or given to Chilchimbato. It was the water and the trash uh, bin. So we, uh, as I mentioned, we've assumed those costs and, um, and have been in co communication with community members trying to get them uh, service was a little bit of a task over the last two months. Um, as soon as they were filled, um, community members would let us know. And so um, uh, we'd have to establish a better uh, uh, sanitation route on that one. But <clears throat> we'll advocate to keep those services there. Um, but there has to be some remedy as to um, relieving the cost and addressing the cost of those. So we'll we'll have to discuss that offline as to how we can address that. <laughs> also, I did mention, um, you mentioned that the, you, there needs to be a team. And my response was that we do need to um, convert the certified and emergency management team to a COVID-19 emergency response team. Um, and they're, they're going to need support. They're going to need training and they're going to need up to date equipment and material, um, or PPE to be a part of this COVID-19, uh, emergency management team. Um, it's labor intense. There's sanitation. There's, um, uh, uh, food distribution items to be distributed. So I think this post-COVID world is going to have us be creating COVID-19 cert teams or emergency management teams. 
um, that can be that can respond to the labor intense need of um, of the of the chapters. These teams can be maybe regional, but and they're going to need um, training. Uh, I was able to watch part of the Redberry training and the members from the fire station next door um, <clears throat> display and demonstrate their um, their training and the deconning and the food delivery, the zero contact. Um, and so those are the types of trainings that these CERT teams are going to need to continue some of these long-term services at the chapter level. And then the uh, other one was the no in-person meeting. Uh, again, DOJ um, and DCD not recommending those in-person meetings. We do hear um, sporadically throughout the Navajo Nation that some chapters are trying to meet. We try to address that. Um, we do appreciate um, um, the 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 recent um, positions and address those, and those are out of the safety and concern, the safety of members and chapter officials um, and, and members to the community not, not meeting in person until we have um, vaccinations, until we have uh, less strain on our hospitals, until we see numbers decrease. Um, that's we're we're quite a few a ways out from seeing some in person meetings right now, and our chapters have been flexible and adapted to um, alternative methods of discussing and meeting um, on chapter concerns. So we appreciate their chapter officials' flexibility and adaptations to to recent um, uh, changes of COVID. Um, <clears throat> Some chapters, um, uh, you know, they have to practice those guidance based on CD, CDC guidance and HCOC. So we also are in support of um, um, the, the not meeting in person. Um, um, so, uh, so, speaker, I hope I answered those. Lastly, um, Delegate Brown. Um, I understand your concern, and I heard you before mention about the mattresses and et cetera, but also this is a time for us to reach out. Um, IHS has a great responsibility in assisting in the sanitation. They also receive funding through their CARES Act funding to address sanitation and sanitation facilities, and we can partner and work with them on addressing um, family needs, individual family needs as well, especially those who are impacted heavily by COVID. Um, uh, we have been working on some of those uh, isolated home kits. We've been calling them recovery kits, but also um, there's also a trust responsibility and responsibility to others as well uh, in assisting and addressing um, uh, the sanitation needs to the Navajo people, and IHS is is one of them, and um, and so we look forward to discussing that further with them. So yeah, yeah, speaker, and um, to the members of the Navajo Nation Council, twenty fourth Navajo Nation Council. Yeah, that uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Yellowman. My colleagues, I don't have anybody in the queue. And again, thank you again for being part of this discussion Chairman, today. Chairman, Vice Chair. Uh, Vice Chair Smith, Vice go Chair. ahead. Oh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Yellowman. I was at a uh, house planning meeting this morning, and um, their main concern was they wanted me to bring this up, and I'm sure uh, we're all aware of it, based on the uh, Q84. I know we're talking about the um, CARES Act, 
But however, this does tie into public uh, sanitation and water. Uh, they were wanting me to <laughs> ask this question, and I told them that I would uh, ensure that I do ask this question. The bathroom additions, they said they have it all in the warehouse, all the supplies and all the materials. And they were concerned on when is that going to be initiated? When is that going to be constructed? Because uh, <coughs> the materials are there just uh, sitting there. That is what the Hawk community is asking. Folks are waiting patiently. And I know last year we were talking about this and wanted to get this underway, and it was uh, supposedly under construction, but now this uh, pandemic is a factor in behalf of what's going to happen. Is this going to be put on the back burner? They're hoping not. Um, they're wanting to ensure that this project is not forgotten, and they wanted me to ask that directly to CPMD and see what they bring up forth to this uh, concern that they have. So, Chair, that's my main concern for how chapter, and glad I got a chance to speak on this. So I'd like to have uh, an answer on this and the communication to the chapter. They're certified and what's taking place and what's happening. So I just want to thank you very much, uh, Chair. Yeah. Honorable uh, Wesher Smith, okay, let me go back to um, Dr. Yellowman. Dr. Yellowman? Thank you, Vice Chair uh, Raymond Smith. <clears throat> um, um, thank you, Speaker Damon. Um, DCD and MD. We we are committed to completing the project um, since the onset of COVID-19. Some of our services were limited as there was closure to uh, Navajo Nation government offices. We do have staff working tele telecommuting teleworking and working from home. I did mention earlier that there will be some project updating um, via conference call, um, and our staff have been submitting uh, reports as to what they've been working on. And as to supplies sitting uh, some uh, in a warehouse or et cetera, I'll have to inquire about that. But um, I think we 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 both. Uh, know that I want to see these projects completed as well. And um, I know we have to, uh, I know there are some requirements right now for for um, work to be uh, established and such as uh, moving forward with um, uh, gatherings of five or more, et cetera. So we want to make sure that we meet those requirements before we open up um, a DCD for staff to return back to work. Uh, as I mentioned earlier in my report, my focus has been on the chapters reopening. I have, I have yet to really sit down and establish the schedule for DCD. Uh, my focus has been more, a little bit more on the chapters reopening, FEMA, we're still in we're still like heavily involved with COVID, um, but I also know that we have a large responsibility to projects and our staff um, are, we still have to address DCD opening as well. So um, we'll return back to work soon and we return back to um, addressing those projects. Um, Bathroom additions is a COVID-related 19 need, 
and um, heavily related to the prevention of COVID-19. So those are uh, a priority right now. And we have shared earlier on the report that we are <clears throat> working with other entities, other entities such as NECA, other entities such as NTUA, et cetera, to um, move forward on these projects. And, um, and even uh, on the onset of our IDIQ, we were um, in the process of moving forward with our on-call capabilities right uh, at the onset and working with um, Speaker, Speaker Damon on his support for moving towards an IDIQ on-call professional services. We still have every intention of moving in that direction. We have to alleviate the projects that have come to DCD and we need the outsourcing capability or the uh, ability to task out those projects. Um, I mentioned earlier in my report that prior to 2018, prior to CAP 35-18, um, there was a little under uh, 50 projects and $9 million in um, allocated authorized projects. And then after 2018, our project listing grew over 300% both in Citizen Project, PIT, and New Mexico. That's a major undertaking that had come to DCD, CPMD, right in the years of 2018 and 2019. And now we're um, uh, addressing those and having, and in doing so, we have to address our capacity of completing those projects. I hope to see those projects completed in my time here, and I'm seeking the support of um, the council and seeking the support of um, uh, uh, to address those. And we were had just started the process of the IDIQ, the on-call, to complete those projects. So, Speaker, I, I hope I properly addressed those questions, and um, we can follow up, as I mentioned before, CPMD is scheduling some on-call project updates by agencies and um, can also further go into details of those projects. So thank you, Speaker. Great. Thank you as well, Dr. Yellman. Uh, colleagues, I don't have anybody else in the queue. Well, Vice Chair. Oh, actually, 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 I do. Sorry, sorry. Honorable uh, Kellen McGee, I just got your text message. Vice Chair Smith, was that you too? Yes, sir. Did you have a follow up? Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Speaker. Um, my phone dropped when she was uh, explaining what was going on. So, in less than a few words. What's the answer? Is it yes, no, maybe, don't know? Um, yeah, it was a whole gamut of stuff, but I was listening for the word saying Q84 bathroom projects is going to be underway on a certain time. Uh, we're we're going to work on it. I didn't hear that. Um, it got dropped. Now I'm back on. Uh, that's what HALP wants to know. They want to know a definite answer. We've been asking these questions. We've been asking them, asking them, and... I hate to go back to Hauk and say, what the, is she, how is she, don't nish, don't he So, uh, speaker, could I get a definite answer? Um, time frame, is it going to be this year? Is it going to be next year? Is it going to be uh, after the COVID-19 is no longer available? Uh, thank you, speaker. Dr. Yellowman. Throw that back to you again. Thank you, Speaker. Um, Delegate Smith, yes, I have project managers. I'm emailing them right now to um, begin that communication and to set a timeline with the HOP chapter. I know we've had previous conversations, ongoing conversations regarding this, and the chapters uh, deserve the timeline 
and I'm respectfully requesting for CTMD uh, and uh, the staff in the bathroom additions to address a timeline that is satisfactory to Hawk Chapter. Um, <clears throat> so, Speaker Damon, we want to address that, and I ask that CPMD provide a timeline to a hot chapter as they're listening in on the line as well. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker, just one more request real quick, like, um, then I'll get off the uh, second on the uh, mute. Honorable Vice Chair Smith, could you say that again? Uh, uh, real, real quick request uh, to uh, Dr. Yellman, and I'll get back on mute. It's not very right. lengthy. Uh, thank you, uh, Speaker. Thank you, uh, Dr. Yellman, for uh, considering the timeline. One thing I'd like to request is uh, ensure that the communications to the chapter from the CPMD to the uh, project to uh, ensure that they have that information so that we will be uh, well aware of what's going on, what's taking place. I would really, really appreciate that. That's all I have to say. Thank you. So that, colleagues, uh, let me go on down. Honorable Kellen Begay, are you on the line? Hey, Honorable uh, Keon Begay, are you there? Hey, colleagues. Um, there's nobody else uh, having questions for Division of Community Development. I can go ahead and uh, go on. Honorable Keon Begay, I just saw text that he's talking. Can anybody hear him? Nope. No, Hello. can't hear him. Keowen. Keowen. I can't hear him. Speak up, Keowen. Hey. Can, can I hear you? I can't hear you. I'm gay. I got a line. Can I gay? You're the last one. So I can't go on. He texts me saying, go on. I'll pass. Jay, you're, you're up. That, let me go back to uh, maybe Mr. Daniels. On um, Herman Daniels, are you on the line? I know you were wanting to ask a question, but I couldn't hear you earlier as well. No Daniels. Um, we can't have a gay. I have absolutely no phones blocked. Everything's open. Uh, speaker. Yes. I can hear somebody. Jay, is that you?
technology. Yeah. I can read his text message here. He said, question is, focus back to chapters. Water available for chapters. Hey, maybe anybody else want to speak? Speaker, uh, is this, this is Callan. There you are, Callan. Uh, yeah. uh, speaker, uh, quickly, I, I'm just asking if the division community development could really uh, somehow strategize and refocus back on providing essential service back to the uh, Navajo chapters. Uh, the basic for now is um, uh, having water availability. I know that certain chapters only do uh, essential service on certain times, but there's got to be a broader uh, uh, focus back on the chapter. A lot of our Navajo people work. Uh, a lot of these Navajo people that don't have running water, a lot of them work or go they don't get off until 5 o'clock. By that time, a lot of these chapters are closed. Yeah, human is the uh, focus and priority. But a lot of times, we've got to have avail water available for uh, the livestock. And maybe Division Community Development can reinforce the request to the Nat Division of Natural Resources. Uh, uh, water, water development, Mr. Jason John, Mr. Hare, uh, Mr. Shabala, uh, they continue to say to me that they don't have the staff and uh, we don't have the manpower and so on. Oh, I think somebody's making noise on purpose here. Well, anyway, it is hold on, hold on, hold on, Kelby. Wanda, can you get that? I think um, Kelby, can, can you keep talking? I'm going to mute everyone else except for you. I appreciate that. I said that the land is not the city, but um, uh, again, focus back on to the chapter. It is the Navajo Nation being scared. Water is needed out there. HCASC work closely with the, each of the chapter grazing officials and the chapter official at a water or windmill. That hecky is out of the atmosphere at all. It's that that all that the shinka they're willing to work maybe reach. Go to the uh, outside, go go out source to see if any of these programs could be able to uh, to uh, 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 fix our windmills on the Navajo Nation. So eight a year ago, Kodo this ah, Shnantano Senegi ah, Shonren kita Shne Kodo. Me even though I sit on the Resource Development Committee, me just eight 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 the Kodo ko ko at Shne Tona so stop just me. Uh, we don't have enough uh, resource. So I don't know if, the, if that's a legitimate response. Uh, that's the only thing right for right now is fixing water, I mean, water, uh, windmills and earthen dam to certain area of the Navajo Nation. If not, maybe specifically for the five chapters that I represent. And I've been sending information to the president's office, 
the chief of staff, and then the uh, division director, division master resource and water management. Other B R A the Peninsula that have a bahanas ton lindy water availability at the Navajo uh, chapters. So it is quite a shame maybe stress that major deal that they do a call. You know that a lot of our Navajo people utilizes uh, uh, have cisterns, so they got a kotata dokis, kotata dokis that be taking a call. I mean the one one load of uh, delivery of water would probably only last a day. So they need, they can't wait for another week to get additional water. So a could all it out at a show, but that the list it out at that the little top into a hello at the end is in reality section. So a could open an hinge cut a little division committee development. Please reinforce that water needed out in the community area due to the uh, drought and. The weather, I mean, it's going to go up to 90 and something. The other district got a call. I call 80 by 90 inch car speaker. The committee members must send it. I say that. Thank you, Honorable Kiyon McGee. Let me go back to Dr. Yellowman. Thank you, Speaker. <clears throat> Speaker Damon, um, and just responding to Delegate Kiel and Begay, um, I always appreciate his um, comments on returning back to the chapters. I'm I'm wondering if he means adjusting the hours so that people in the evenings and the weekend can have access to the water. And what he means, I'm wondering if he means by people work during the day is that when they're off work, they utilize, they need to have access to the water in the evenings and weekends. If that's what he's um, suggesting, then we have to work with our local chapters and chapter non-certified um, chapter managers or chapter CSCs to make some of those adjustments. So those are definitely things that we can address. However, ASC, we um, we don't have the uh, proper authority to address windmills and dams, um, but we can relay that information to Division of Natural Resources as they um, are the ones that oversee the um, the windmill and the the dams there as well, and request that they respond to. Um, Kian Begay's emails and communications. <clears throat> um, so, um, I, if that's what he means by focusing back on the chapters, we, we do have um, uh, quite a bit of attention on the chapters. So, um, <clears throat> so speaker, we we will begin to address um, the hours. The hours of those um, uh, water to to adjust to the times of the Navajo people. Um, so, if that's what he's indicating, we can do that. Also, DCD has the website. The website has plenty of information. I want to share that again on the COVID-related um, data, the um, food distribution and water distribution, and um, the current information from uh, DOJ and resources available to the chapters and to chapter officials. Um, so please um, refer to that as well. Use that as a tool for information. So, Speaker, I hope I um, answered um, those questions if you have. That, thank you, Elman. Thank you very much. Let me make sure here. I don't have anybody else in the queue. No one lined up. Thank you very much again, Dr. Yellowman, for being with us this morning um, into this afternoon uh, regarding some rec um, overall views from your division. Uh, we really, really look forward to uh, uh, having something in writing because that's something that we're looking and needing to make sure that my colleagues. Uh, 
have that before them in order for them to utilize those as exhibits. Uh, as that's, uh, those documents are needed in order for us to actually start putting together a fund management plan, uh, expenditure plan, actually. And I don't know how soon you'll be able to get those to us, but uh, we really look forward to seeing those as quickly as possible. So again, thank you very much for being uh, with us this morning, but uh, just stress that urgency for uh, getting that information back over, uh, not only here, but um, uh, even no matter what legislation goes through, uh, those documents are going to be needed in order for us to compile that together and for us to make sure that we address the needs of your division, but more importantly, the needs of the people out there. And the people are served by 110 chapters too as well. So thank you again for being here with us today. Uh, Dr. Yellman. Thank you, Speaker, um, and to the members of the 24th Navajo Nation Council. I'm responding right now and email to you as to the date uh, that we will have the written report um, sent to um, your officer. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. That colleagues, uh, thank you very much uh, for being a part of the uh, Navigating Committee work session today. I know that there is a Navajo Hopi Land Commission meeting starting here at one o'clock. Um, I'm not too sure if there's any other uh, committee meetings going on today, but thank you very much for being a part of this discussion with the Vision of Community Development and taking this into consideration. We, but we will be working with uh, Dr. Yellowman I know that uh, staff from uh, here, um, Ms. Uh, Sherilyn Yazi is working together with Dr. Yellowman to get that information so we can go ahead and move that forward. So as soon as we get that information, we'll forward that out to you colleagues. Again, uh, this is moving on down onto the discussion items. We're at a close of our meeting now. Um, any announcements? Uh, speaker. Yes, Vice Chair Walker. Speaker. Yes. Uh, again, yeah, uh, um, other colleagues, and then all the uh, listeners out there on the uh, World Wide Web. Um, <clears throat> just an announcement. Next week, Thursday, which is uh, June 11, uh, the Winslow Indian Healthcare Center will be um, having a COVID-19 uh, testing blitz in uh, Delcon at the uh, clinic there. So this is next uh, Thursday, a week from today. So there'll be a testing blitz for the um, communities uh, in and around Delcon. So this is the Winslow Indian Healthcare Center putting that on. And then uh, the following week, uh, another one will be held out in Loop Community, again at the clinic. And will be uh, testing will be administered by the Winslow Indian Healthcare Center. So testing kits were donated by University of Arizona. We really appreciate that donation and all the effort that's being put into um, the uh, testing. Of course, uh, Bikedo, a yeah, contact tracing, a those, that, those uh, kinds of uh, efforts and services uh, need to be um, prioritized also. Uh, along with that is uh, isolation, quarantine, and having um, alternative uh, care sites available. So, uh, so all that testing, then it leads to other other services and other efforts. So, um, you know, it it's, uh, seems like a long road for uh, people that are affected, unfortunately, but there is, again, recovery. People have recovered. Uh, a high number of people have uh, recovered, and uh, we, we um, are very concerned for everyone. So, again, the uh, testing blitz out in southwest Navajo Nation, uh, Mr. Uh, Speaker, thank you for 
your support and support of our staff, the Office of the Speaker and uh, Winslow Indian Health Care Center and, of course, Navajo Nation for making all this possible. Have a good day. Thank you, Vice Chair Walker, for that. <laughs> um, thank you again to everyone who's helped put that together. Um, and have a good day, too, as well, Vice Chair Walker. Safe travels. Yeah, moving on down, Vice Chair Smith. Vice Chair Smith. Hey, well, there's no other announcements, colleagues. I know that tomorrow, Friday, um, there is a Law and Order Committee meeting. Uh, I do believe that's at 9 a.m. Um, yeah. Other than, uh, other than that, colleagues, and then I know I, uh, there will be a state task force meeting again on Saturday. Uh, I do believe that is at 9 a.m. too as well. So, colleagues, if there's no other announcements... Go on. Thank you very much for being a part of this discussion today, colleagues. Uh, safe travels, and we move on from there. If there's uh, any kind of comments, questions, additionally, um, go ahead and email. But uh, everyone out there, we don't have a 57-hour uh, curfew this weekend. It's just uh, 8 a 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. again. So again, everyone, stay safe out there. Have a good day.